welcome to the February 2023 uh, uh, meeting of the Raleigh Historic Development Commission Certificate of Appropriateness Committee. I'll call this meeting to order. Note that it is 5.05 p.m. February 23rd, 2023. At this time, I'll recognize staff to call the roll. Curtis Casefang? Here. Rob Allen? Here. Wes Tripp? Here. John Reese? Here. Jordan Ryland? Here. Uh, I will note that we have a quorum present. Again, welcome to the February 2023 meeting of the Raleigh Historic Development Commission Certificate of Appropriateness Committee. My name is Wes Tripp. I am chair of the committee. Uh, if you have not already, uh, please uh, come forward to the rostrum and sign the attendance roster. Uh, agenda and staff reports have been, made, have been made available, and a handout on, heat, on meeting procedure is also available. The Raleigh Historic Development Commission Certificate of Appropriateness Committee uh, is a city council appointed body. It contains residents of historic districts, architects, intern architects, architectural consultants, and contractors, as well as attorneys and historians, urban planners, and historic preservationists. Uh, at this time, I'll recognize my fellow commissioners to introduce themselves. I will first, we'll start with Curtis down at the end. Okay, Curtis Casefang, I'm a resident of Oakwood. This is my second round on the commission and I did some time on DRAC. Uh, when I'm not doing this, I work as a theater consultant designing theaters and concert halls throughout the U.S. and Canada. Rob Allen, I'm a Raleigh native, uh, resident of the Boylan Heights Historic District and uh, work at an architecture firm where I'm a project manager and senior associate. And I'm Francis Raspberry. I'm an attorney with a Raleigh law firm and I'm legal counsel to the COA committee. Again, I'm Wes Tripp. I'm an attorney here in Raleigh, resident of the Prince Hall Historic District. My name is John Reese. I am an architect uh, for the state of North, with a, a registered in the state of North Carolina. I am also a resident of the Glenwood, Brooklyn neighborhood, and I've been on the commission. For, uh, I think this is my third year. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jordan Ryland. I'm a local architect and uh, resident of Raleigh. Uh, hello, I am Erin Warden. I'm staff to the RHDC. Uh, I've been working with the city for three years now and uh, have a master's in historic preservation. Hello, everyone. I'm Colette Kinane. I am also staff to the commission. I've been with the city for about five years, and I also have a master's in historic preservation. All right. Thank you. This time I'll entertain a motion to waive reading of the minutes. So moved. Uh, Second. Any corrections or additions that need to be noted? Uh, hearing none, the question before the committee's adoption of the minutes. Uh, the motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, this time I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Mo so moved. Second. Uh, motion has been made and properly seconded. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Hearing none, the question before the committee is a uh, motion to approve the minutes. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carries unanimously. Uh, staff, have there been any minor works approved in the last month? There were six minor works approved this month. All right, we're now ready to move on to applications. Uh, prior to the meeting, notice has been sent to property owners within 100 feet of the properties in question. Legal ad placed and signage posted at the site. Commission members received a copy of each application, staff reports, and were to have visited each property. Staff reports were made publicly available with the agenda. North Carolina law provides that major work applications must be approved in an evidentiary hearing and that persons have an opportunity to address an application should they desire. We're now ready to conduct the evidentiary hearing phase of the meeting. Evidentiary hearings are conducted in a quasi-judicial format. During the hearing, the committee receives evidence to determine that proposed changes are not incongruous with the special character of the district or the historic property. We review this evidence against guidelines referenced in the city ordinance before issuing a certificate. Each application is heard in the same way as listed in the meeting procedure handout. The quasi-judicial format of the hearing requires that we be impartial. The written staff reports are evidence presented just as any other evidence and were made available to us, the applicants, and the public at the same time. If any of us have had reason to discuss the specific details of an application before today, we'll ask to be excused from hearing that application. There is no time limit on testimony, but repetition is discouraged. Because of the quasi-judicial format of our hearings, which is that the commission hears evidence and then judges whether the change is not incongruous, we are required by North Carolina law to affirm or swear persons that speak before the commission and offer evidence. 
All speakers will be affirmed at the beginning of each case. And now at this time, I'll swear in the staff who will be presenting uh, for each case. Uh, for those presenting, please raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give on the matters of today's agenda is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right. Um, first, we have an old application. This is 410 Northeast Street, uh, COA 0136-2022. Uh, ask the applicant and anyone who will be presenting to please come forward. Are there any members of the committee who have an interest in the matter or otherwise feel that they cannot be impartial or fair in the hearing of this case? The tree protection plan. Just a little extra information. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hazelton, I know you've been before us before, but please introduce yourself. Uh, John Hazelton, 410 Northeast Street. All right, I'm going to ask that you raise your hand and we'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Uh, staff, is there anything additional to uh, add for this presentation? For your, on your, for the staff presentation? Uh, no, we'll just make a brief presentation with an update on the case. Okay. Uh, and we did leave our wireless mouse, unfortunately, so we'll be back and forth tonight. Um, all right, this case is COA 136 2022 for 410 Northeast Street. You, um, in the Oakwood, move the microphone closer. In the Oakwood Historic District. Uh, the request is to remove a non-historic rear accessory structure, uh, remove non-historic fence, construct rear wood fence, and remove a dying tree. Um, you can see that this is a property that abuts uh, one of the alleyways in Oakwood, of which there are a few. Uh, and you'll recall that we deferred this application last month at the request of the applicant to add that piece about removing uh, the existing <coughs> shed. Uh, so these are the same photos presented to you last month, just a view of the existing property from the street uh, and several <coughs> photos around the rear of the lot where the work is largely proposed to be concentrated. You can see the shed proposed for removal to the left here, um, and that is adjacent to that alleyway. Uh, and looking back down the side property line along the alleyway here. Um, staff concerns are that a replacement tree is not proposed to be planted, um, a paint sample was not provided, and tree protection plan uh, was not prepared by what we call an expert, an ISA certified arborist or a landscape architect, uh, and didn't um, account for that shed removal phase since that was added um, during the hearing last month. Uh, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer that, and um, from, I'll do it from over there. All right, Mr. Hazelton, you have the floor to uh, present your application. Okay. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to add, but um, to address a couple of the concerns, the replacement tree not being proposed uh, is due to the shade covering and um, Bart Bartlett tree experts noting uh, a another tree wouldn't thrive in that location, so we don't plan to replace it. Um, the fence sample, paint sample, something I could add if needed but uh, generally just a light gray stain and um, and then I passed out some extra notes from our contractor about the uh, shed removal and destruction and um, the plan for protecting the tree right behind the shed the closest tree uh, which would be to um, we could put up <coughs> Uh, what did he say wall brackets so that it doesn't fall backwards but also remove that back wall by hand um, to make sure nothing falls backwards and everything falls forward and so uh, with that I mean I'll open it up for questions are there any members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application uh, anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the case Anyone present who wishes to make comments regarding the application? All right, hearing none, at this time I'll open the floor to my fellow commissioners for their questions. I have a question for staff. Um, one of the potential conditions you noted was uh, something on tree protective measures for the shed removal and construction phase. 
Are you satisfied with what's been provided here in terms of being making it clear to you what's expected? That is really a question for you all to decide. Mm -hmm. um, typically, we have uh, approved measures with conditions that tree protection plans are approved or created by an ISA certified arborist or landscape architect simply to know that an expert has made the recommendation and it gains the, the highest likelihood that the tree will survive post work. Um, if you feel that these protection measures are sufficient, um, you are able to vote without that condition. Okay. Any additional questions, Curtis? Nope, that's it. Rob? None. Jordan? No questions. John? Would you be opposed to having an arborist or a landscape architect do the tree protection plan instead of the contractor? Uh, no, if that's something you want. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from the commission? All right, uh, this time I'll close the evidentiary hearing and move to committee discussion. Feels pretty in line with what we discussed at last month's meeting, and I agree with John, your question. So, I mean, I think that would be a reasonable condition to include um, regarding the arborists Thank you, uh, out, outline. Um, also, I mean, it sounds like Bartlett's already looked at the tree, so they have some familiarity with the site, so that shouldn't be a big lift. Yeah, right, I agree. And then um, I also think that just giving, making sure that we put the, uh, they, they need to submit the paint color because in oak wood that's a big deal mm -hmm. but it's not in glenwood brooklyn <laughs> are we in glenwood brooklyn no i'm joking oh, no it's not a, it's not i'm sorry yeah we're, we're it, oak, we're i oak think it's light. a big deal it's a big deal everywhere right yeah so, yeah well yeah. yeah but that that could be a condition any additional uh discussion rob would you like to make a motion sure um I'll motion to, uh, based on the um, the evidence provided both before this meeting and in the evidentiary hearing, that we um, move to um, to approve uh, this COA with the following uh, conditions: that uh, one that a 365 day delay demolition delay not be imposed. Um, that any new post holes be dug manually and tree roots larger than one inch caliber that are encountered while digging shall be receive a clean and final cut using tools designed for the purpose, such as loppers. Three, <clears throat> that the materials and specifications be submitted and approved by staff prior to, to installation and construction. Um, a, fence uh, physical paint samples. B, uh, tree protective measures um, for the shed removal, uh, construction phase, and along with B, um, that a board certified arborist or landscape architect provide the uh, tree protection plan. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the question for the committee is the motion to approve the application uh, subject to the conditions as laid out by Commissioner Allen. Uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Uh, thank you for the work you've put in. The official, the decision will be made official uh, next month's meeting when uh, the minutes are approved and signed. So thank you very much. Yep, thank you. All right, moving on to new applications. Next up is 1112 Fillmore Street. This is COA 0138-2022. This is in the, in the Glenwood, Brooklyn yes, district. So yes, moving, moving on. Yeah. Yes, please introduce yourself. So I'm Robert Legrand. I'm a homeowner there at 1112 Fillmore. Um, all right, just please raise your hand and we'll swear you in. All right. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, uh, before you proceed, are there any members of the committee who have an interest in this matter or otherwise feel that they cannot be impartial or fair in the hearing of this case? All right, hearing none, we will proceed and note you are the property owner. Um, let's see here. And next, I will uh, call on staff to make their presentation. Okay. 
All right. So as you mentioned, this is case COA 138 2022 for 1112 Fillmore Street, which is in the Glenwood, Brooklyn Historic District. The nature of the request is to construct a second story addition and north side addition, alter window openings, remove window openings, extend the chimney, remove a dormer and construct dormers. You can see here the property is just one south from the corner. And this is a view um, of it from the street. Again, a little further south on Fillmore Street from the end of the driveway. And on the other side, a view down the existing arbor where the uh, current stoop is on the north side. Um, this is from the alley looking at the existing garage. And again, the alley looking kind of towards the north and down the garage side looking back towards that stoop on the north side. Uh, some of staff concerns were that um, a dimensioned scaled site plan was not provided. Neither was a built mass or open space analysis or a tree protection plan. Um, however, after the site visit, it's evident that the one large tree is at the front of the property, um, which would not likely be impacted by the construction. Um, there was little analysis of the congruity of the proposed structure with the special character of the district provided and typical material specifications and details that are often approved as conditions were not provided. Um, no, I'm just okay. here to answer Perfect. questions. Yeah, do you have any presentation to make? Uh, not really. I mean, the only thing uh, I would say is that, you know, uh, I'm not sure if it matters, but this the house, you know, falls outside of the scope of um, the period of significance. It was built in, looks like, per weight gov, it was built in 1956. So we're, we're, all we're trying to do is just lift it up, make it look as, you know, as, um, as much to the property, much like to the property as possible. So anything else? Um, that's it. Any questions? Oh, okay. Uh, is there anyone, members of the public, who wish to speak in support of the application? Please come forward. You can come up front to, uh, and speak at the mic. And please state your name. It's Mindy Brown, and I am the neighbor directly north of him. Okay. I'm going to swear you in, so please okay. raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. You may proceed. So I, I am not opposed to the project. Move the microphone. Oh. Just right in front of your face. I'm not opposed to the project, but I have some legitimate concerns. There are two really mature old oak trees in the front yard, of which one is in the right of way, and the other one's going to probably need some pr serious pruning for the addition. And so I'm concerned about the protection of the tree. My second concern is the staging of the project, <clears throat> because I'm not quite sure how they can get through from the alley access for the equipment for the building. So it's going to be, um, it probably will be um, the materials and the equipment and machinery being brought in the front over the root system. So I'd like to have more information on the staging um, of that. And then I wanted to <clears throat> clarify some information in the staff report. Um, the, the house is a one story with the attic, and it also states that no information was given on the height of my house, which is next door. So I'm here to give it. It's 27, uh, wait a minute. 27 feet, 8 inches tall. So my biggest concern is the massing of the property and also on a personal level, the height of this house is going to be so much higher than mine. Well, not so much, but enough where I will no longer get any southern exposure, no sun in all my windows. And um, there's no plot plan and no dimensions. So I can't tell where this house and the additions are falling on the site, if it's left um, 
enough room for the setbacks and the setbacks with the overhangs on the north side addition. And um, I'm concerned about all the windows, which appear to be, though it's not, there's no scaling or size to it, larger, <clears throat> this again on the north side, larger than the existing windows. <coughs> And then my final concern is the actual site. They have a garage in the back that is approximately 35 feet wide on a 50-foot lot. And um, the land between the house and the garage is covered with pavement. So um, that radiates a lot of heat. So those are my concerns. If there's somehow we can get the owners to address that in a meaningful way so that the neighbors know what they're actually getting into. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any additional members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application? Uh, members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to the case? Anyone who wishes to make other comments on the application? Mr. Legrand, you have an opportunity to uh, respond to um, the, the individual's comments. Yeah, um, the the one Willow Oak, uh, you know, it, it does. I mean, we're going to do our best to protect everything, but you know, we'll get the arborist plans and all that. We're just trying to get the you know first steps going. Um, but it, it does have mushrooms that come out in the spring from the trunk, so there's a little bit of concern there. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we'll do everything we can to protect, protect it, and we do keep, you know, keep it trimmed. Actually, she has trimmed it recently as well, so you know, we we'll do our best. And then, uh, as far as height, she's on a slope, so I, I've been told that we're not going to be higher than her house. So, can you move the microphone closer to your mouth, please? Yeah, yeah thanks. So, um, I guess we'll see. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, this time, I'll recognize my fellow commissioners for questions. Do you have a plan, or is there a contractor, general contractor on board already? Yeah, we've been talking to uh, to a couple, <clears throat> so we're just narrowing it down. We just wanted to make sure that we were going to get the green light sure. to go up before we. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the ones we are are they are familiar with the process, so they'll be working more directly once we get you an have, idea that it's not going to be a problem. And y you you do have an alley, so that's. That's, yes. There's a benefit to that with a construction project. Do you, have any of your contractors that you've spoken to said anything regarding the concerns about um, staging, logistics, <laughs> plan for bringing materials in? Uh, just looking at the satellite view, it does look like it's a very tight Yeah. Site, so I think it's a legitimate concern from your neighbor. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess most of it will be through the, to the front or we'll have to take the fencing down in the back to get through there. I mean... So, I don't know. What do you mean, like putting like? A well, uh, usually a, a contractor could make a recommendation on logistics plans. Some of the applications we see uh -huh. say this is where we're going to stage materials, and there's kind of construction ingress and egress. Um, yeah. So we have a little bit of understanding that they're not going to lay down materials like in the drip line of this big tree in your front no, yard. No. So we have a huge patio in the back that we can store as much material as we need. Am I correct in gathering that there's really no change in the footprint of the structures? Uh, we are. There is other a, than the bump out on bump the one out, side. Yes, that's, okay. that's correct. Yes, okay. sir. And then, you know, we've. Uh, I know there was one concern about the brick. You know, we were just trying to. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Custom Brick Company, but uh, Grant Fisher mentioned that he could make it. You know, where it, it matches congruently with the. You know, so it looks seamless. Um, as far as the bricks, we thought, I, I was under the impression that the brick was the most historic part about the property because it does have, you know, the year the brick was made and the company and stuff like that. Obviously, I don't think the company is still in business, but he said he could make it look uh, like it was all the same brick. Oh, that was good. <laughs> uh, I, I sense that. Um, I'm going to put on my professor hat for a second. Yeah. Um, the reason you're here today is not because of the house design itself, but because of 
its impact into the neighborhood. So we're looking at con- it congruency with the neighborhood, right. not just the um, whether the house itself has uh, historical issues. Yeah. Because we've already yeah. determined that it's yeah. uh, not contributing. Yes. To the overall. Yeah, and you know, it's, you know, as I mentioned in my letter, it's you know, the corridor there. Majority of the two-story houses, the majority of the houses in that corridor are two-story, mm-hmm. um, and. Um, I think it has it as a story and a half already, even though it's only been used as a one mm-hmm. story. So I, I, we're just I, lifting the lid to make it bigger. Obviously, we had two kids running out of room. Sure, 1,500 square foot house and with real estate prices the way they are. It's, yeah. it's kind of our only option. Um, in speaking with you, you said somebody had told you that you would not be any higher than the neighbor next That's, door. That was my that? understanding. Um, I'll go back to our Matt Sprague's, the architect who did the drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, he did say that, but maybe I misunderstood him. Okay. I think that part of my concern would be to have that verified. Right. Um, and to have it verified that it satisfies the neighbors as much as possible. Also in terms of, uh, coming up with a staging plan, um, to make sure that not only do you not cause any damage to the tree and all and drip Mm -hmm. edges and those things, but that, uh, there's not any damage to neighboring properties yeah. or concerns about um, issues so that you have a happy process throughout the whole yeah. thing. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, when I talked to the arborist uh, at Bartlett, you know, he said the tree was diseased. So, I mean, it could be dying. But that would need to be verified very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, before, so that you have the understanding of what you need to do to process that through. Right. Um, but I mean, if it's dead, then what do I do about that? I gotta cut it down. Well, you'll, as I understand it, because it's on the front face of the property, it would have to go through a, through us to have it removed. Right. Um, but again, I would like to do everything. I like the tree. Sure. I'd like to do everything I can to preserve it. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, did you include photos of uh, twelve twenty two Fillmore to? point about its height or 11 22 or it looks like it's 12 22 it's it's on the corner there the, the photos that you in, yeah. included at the end of your application yeah it sh- should be on there right is it is it just to show that it's a two-story house or um how does it which, relate which, to your application i don't know if we could pull those photos up on the as a, her house oh, yeah it's oh, it was in that's the first your picture. house yeah the one you're talking about i think is 11 22 yeah the so modern-looking one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I was the Eleven twenty-two. I'm just looking at the numbers they have on the house. Uh, like yeah, I'm not sure why my wife submitted that picture. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think she just wanted to show that someone built a modern house in the neighborhood. But we're not doing modern, so. <laughs> right. That's that's why I was a little confused. Yeah. yeah sorry about that. No further questions. Any additional questions from the commissioners? All right, hearing none, we'll close the evidentiary hearing and move to committee discussion. <coughs> it appears there's uh, concerns or not additional information needed to assuage uh, concerns about uh, height, staging, and uh, was there one other thing? Bill, Bill area was in the staff report yeah. as well. And I, I believe, I mean, I believe the applicant has designers engaged that could provide all of this information. I think it's just one more layer that would give us comfort with, you know, the, the project as a whole. I think, you know, I'll, I'll mention Wes, it is on, um, you know, they're on a little bit lower elevation than the, the neighbor to the north. So I think just an, an elevation uh, analysis and comparison along the street would probably help a, a lot ease the neighbor's concern and make us feel more comfortable with with a, an eventual approval. Um, I agree. Um, the, I don't know that the a built area analysis is necessary based on the testimony that there's no change in footprint. Um, so. There's, there's some. <laughs> okay, yeah, a little I, bit, a little bump I, out, yeah. I, I'm, 
I guess, I mean, just procedurally. Yeah, it'd it, be good to have. It's, a, it, yeah. it's part of every staff report, so I feel like it would be. It would check the box. Yeah. Um, I, but yes, yeah, something, a contextual analysis just showing the streetscape to give us a sense of how this goes into the streetscape I think is important because it is a substantial change in its elevation. Yeah, I uh, knew someone that used to live on this street and the house, I believe that the neighbor lives in is like sort of the tallest house on this side of the street and then they all slowly, step down. slowly yeah. slopes down, but they all are pretty short little bungalow looking houses. Um, so, but there's also some, some other kind of odd, I think there's an apartment complex yeah, across apartment, the street. Yeah, across so the street there's, there's still more apartments. I don't really take any issue with the form of the house. I think mm -hmm. it's not really what's in question here. Uh, those are those are two story apartments. Yeah. Now, as as far as the tree protection plan, I think we can do that as a condition. So I, and then in that they can address lay down space. Um, so I don't think we need that quickly, but I think getting that analysis would be would allow us to elevation analysis yeah, yes elevation I analysis i agree yeah. uh, especially since we have concern from the neighbor yep so would that be like a a sub condition or a an additional condition or a deferral to get or a deferral, deferral. Yeah. yeah okay i mean one option is is that they have to do the analysis to prove that it's no higher than yeah a certain a certain neighbor as a condition I mean, versus having them come back and defer unless we need to see it unless we, I think well and the other option is staff. that we just need to see it in context which yeah. i think makes sense and in context yeah i agree yeah, yeah or agree. we could just go back to the architect and say hey we just want to make sure it's not going to be bigger can you well i think the, the concern is is again we're, we're concerned about the congruity of the relationship sure. to the neighborhood right and so we want to understand how the context is changed by what you're doing uh, in the elevations of the street face, mm -hmm. because uh, as you know, Glenwood, Brooklyn is a street facing uh, COA. We're, we're not like Oakwood, but we definitely have a street face issue. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, I think where we're, where we're going with this is that we just want to see how it's, how, how it's impacting the context. Yeah. So it's not like a matter of, you know, if we were going to do an attic, then we just do con cathedral ceilings instead of an attic or no it, it's no. more just wanting to see how this is going to look on the streets okay okay relative to the adjacent houses ref hopefully in appropriate relation to each other gotcha it doesn't have to be engineering precise just okay give us a sense of what it is perfect yeah and i think that will help the neighbors as well yeah a question for staff uh next month's meeting when is the deadline for production of additional information uh, tomorrow oh. um, for so there are there are potentially two options I guess um, let me look at a calendar I mean I guess it would either be defer indefinitely or defer to April's meeting right so it is possible that um, you could defer an application to March and the applicants provide new information at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that's sometimes not desirable if it's a substantial amount of new information that you have to go through um, before you're able to start discussion, um, but it is possible. Um, the, if you wanted you know, it to be incorporated in the staff report and have time to analyze it yourselves, the next option would be the April meeting. What does the commission uh, feel about that? I think I would prefer moving it to April. I'm I'm ambivalent. I mean, since I'm only caring about the streetscape and how that plays, I think that's something we can do live and in person. Um, getting the site plan will be helpful, but I don't think it's going to reveal anything stunning. So, I, I think April might be a good point because it gives. The the owner the option to get the a contractor who right. may be working with more nailed down so that they can uh, talk about the staging issues and have yeah. a, a more information on that front so that you because right now I, I understand what you're trying to do is just trying to uh, check off all your boxes and stuff yeah exactly yeah, before we start spending too much money so <laughs> we're, we're here to help yeah uh, uh, and provide the advice that we can give you to kind of make it happen very quickly the next time around 
I don't, I don't, I wouldn't mind reviewing it live in March. I mean, we've we've got big packages up here before. Rob, what do you think? I, I, I will add that depending on how many deferrals we wind up with tonight, we are expecting only three. I believe it is on the March agenda, so it'll be a lighter meeting overall. Okay. Another thing potentially for you to discuss, we have, I think, handled this not consistently, but um, in Glenwood, Brooklyn, you know, it's changes the front 50%. Um, so you haven't consistently applied or requested built area calculations um, since the rear portion of the property is not subject to review. So that potentially is something that you could decide that you do not need in this discussion. It's just another thing for you to consider. Uh, Rob, what are your thoughts on timing? Um, I agree with the group. We we could probably review it live if if you know if we got it at the next hearing, but um, also well, I mean we should be clear with the applicant that that could still be subject to additional deferral if we didn't feel that it was clear enough. So I think we should at least. I've been adding some notes, but I'd like to at least give them some clear feedback of what we would expect um, just so that they they know and it's on the record. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it does seem the consensus of the group and I'm fine to uh, mm -hmm. go along with that as well is just to defer it to next month and I'm, I presume you would prefer sooner the better. Yeah, yeah it'd be great. Yeah. Thanks. So, so Rob, you want to make that motion? Yeah, sure. um, yep, so that would be a defer. Just make a, and should I include those items at that time or? Okay. okay. So. Uh, based on the um, evidentiary hearing and the information provided in the application, uh, I motion to make a motion to defer the application until uh, next month's uh, COA meeting, um, and uh, at which time we'll be looking for the applicant to provide, uh, in addition to the information that's already provided, um, a site plan with dimensions. Okay. Um, and this will all be provided to you by staff too in a written form. Right, so, you do need the site plans. Yeah, it, okay. it'd be great to see a site plan with dimensions, especially on the where you're making the addition, mm -hmm. the dimension between that and the property line. Um, it'd be good for your architect to add where 50% back of the house is because, um, as Colette said, that's what we're using to evaluate um, you know, what's within our purview. Um, a logistics plan from a contractor and tree protection plan, um, and then a congruity analysis, which would essentially in this case, I think, be a height analysis of other properties around yours. Um, your your neighbor gave the height of their house. Your, your application does include the um, height of your proposed structure. Right. So I think it would just be getting those onto a single drawing and probably others along your street. Okay. From that, a street face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, did you get that? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Oh, I was going to see if I could make a friendly amendment. Go ahead. Sure. Um, I'd also like to s just understand how much square footage you're adding. Um, um, is it and relevant to the existing square footage of the house? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it would be, I mean... And you can add that. I just want yeah, to add that, include that. In that's the, a, con, a condition. A just, condition that you. I mean, essentially, I think we're at fifteen fifty square foot now, so it's um, it's going to be over. You know, it's going to double the square footage. So you're adding twice. Uh, not. I mean, well, yeah, with the bump out, yeah. Okay. It will be. Rob, do you? It's uh, over three thousand. You approve of that friendly I, amendment? I do. Yeah. Um, do we need a second again, or? I'll second it. <laughs> All right, that's taken care of. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, defer the application to next month's meeting with the stated conditions. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, if you need any assistance with exactly uh, what the commission has requested, uh, okay. check. Uh, get up with staff and they'll be able to gotcha. lay right. out. Uh, what the commission wants for next month's meeting. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank Mr. you. Chairman, if I, if I may make one suggestion yes. to, to Mr. Legrand, uh, as, as legal counsel to this board, mm -hmm. uh, this may not be um, necessary at all. You may have been 
um, informed by the staff of what the burden is and what what um, the committee is looking for mm -hmm. from you. But there's a good bit of law on court-like or quasi-judicial local boards, such as the COA committee and the decisions they have to make. The legal standard is whether an applicant for a certificate of appropriateness has presented mm -hmm. prima facie evidence, which tends to show, in this case, that your proposal is is not incongruous with the special character of the historic district. Okay. And that's reasonable, competent, substantial evidence that makes the case, if it's all believed is true and, and compelling, it makes the case. And I just <clears throat> would suggest that the staff report is probably the best outline okay. of those points and issues where it's been noted that there may be some, some shortfall in the information that's been provided. Mm -hmm. um, the issue is the, the issue is determined under the guidelines and about 100 pages of historic um, design guidelines, right. uh, and they're annotated, they're referenced in the staff report. So that's that's a good starting place to go back and see uh, that together with the questions and comments that the committee members have made. That tells you the points that they're particularly concerned about. But I think that's a good game plan for you to take uh, before coming back to the committee. Perfect. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> All right, next is 518 East Lane Street. This is application COA 0157-2022. Uh, this is in the Oakwood Historic District. Uh, all individuals who will be presenting this application, please come forward and state your name. Kimberly Lamba. Manish Lamba. All right, will both of you be presenting? <coughs> okay, yes. uh, please raise your hand, I'll swear you in. Uh, do you solemnly swear that solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Thank. I do. Thank you. And uh, you're the property owner. Both of us. Both. Oh, awesome. Sorry. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, and at this time, I'll recognize staff to make their presentation. You've got, I'll, I'll pass that out as soon as we're done with the presentation. Okay. This is COA 157-2022. Uh, for 518 East Lane Street in the Oakwood Historic District, the request is to construct a rear addition, construct a rear screened porch, alter the existing side window, and replace the front step metal handrail. Uh, this is a view of 518 from East Lane Street. You can see there's some significant change in elevation up to the front porch, and you can see the existing <coughs> metal railing um, to the right of the front steps. Um, another overall view of what's visible from the street, looking toward the rear up the driveway and looking back down the driveway and side elevation of the house. Uh, and this is the rear yard where the work is proposed to occur. Um, a view looking east in the rear yard. Uh, you can see the existing retaining wall there uh, and the rear elevation of the house. Another rear facade photo, and I believe the uh, window proposed to be altered is tucked right in the corner over here. Uh, and looking back toward the driveway. So staff concerns is that no map or photos of the neighborhood built area examples noted were provided. Um, so COA approval for existing built areas is also unknown. Um, the screening location was demonstrated as being on the outside face of the house, of the porch um, that has actually been corrected and we have some materials to pass out for that um, and full window and door specifications were not provided. Uh, and if you guys want to scroll through the photos or as you speak or if you've got anything to share. Just, just right there. Before we proceed, I want to check with, uh, is there any member of the committee who has an interest in this matter or otherwise feel that they cannot be impartial or fair in the hearing of this case? Seeing none, you may proceed. Okay, so uh, we're adding an addition to the house uh, right in this area um, that just bumps out about 80 square feet total. And then where this gazebo is is where the screened-in porch is going to be. Approximately. Approximately. Anything else? No. All right. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in support of the application? Anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition to the case? Anyone who desires to make comments on the application? All right, hearing none, we'll move to commissioner questions. Uh, 
the the slab is a new slab. Is that correct for the for the screen porch? That is correct. Okay. Um, and we were just presented with some materials, Aaron. That you mentioned the screening, but I don't know if I'm catching that on here. But my the only when I was reviewing the application, the only question. Or I had was about the staff concern with the screen being on the outside versus the inside. Um, do you plan to change the orientation of that? Yes. Yes, so, it will now be on the inside. Okay. I don't. I don't have any other questions. A question for staff: um, The soffit detail we're seeing here is asking. Is talking about some hardy soffit being installed. Do we have precedent for um, that material on historic structure? Typically, fiber cement products have been approved on additions to historic structures. Um, I am not sure about the use of composite materials on rear screen porches. I'd have to look into that. Um, but I would expect that to be treated in a similar fashion. As an addition, yeah. Um, just as new new construction to the main house. And, and the soffit detail is on the for the addition. It's not a change to the house, correct? <coughs> correct. Okay. Am, am I correct? I'm not seeing on the drawings here uh, to um, Curtis's question. Mm -hmm. uh, you're they're not showing any finished material. They're just showing the structural post. This is a structural drawing more than it is a detail for architecture. Correct. I think there was other photos that were provided. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that was still. Yeah. That is still going correct. through. Okay. Yeah. Um, you show a step flash and over. Uh, from the overframe ridge and valley on, on the flat 210, two by tens. I'm, but the elevations, I look at the roof line. I'm just, I'm just confused as to what that is. That's the porch. Yeah, that's the porch area. Yeah, but it's showing that it's a short, it is shorter than it's shorter than what it shows in the elevations, I think. Am I reading that wrong? I mean, I'm asking my fellow commissioners to look at what I'm looking at and tell me if I'm... I look at the elevation, uh, page 13 of 25, and then I'm looking at this wall section, and I don't understand where the step flash is coming in. I, I see your concern. I'm not quite sure how. I don't the know what it is. Two parts of that detail actually yeah. go together. Is, that Thomas? is the same person who drew the section the same person who drew the elevations? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, I don't know. This is for, this is for questions, not for anything yeah. else. But well, I'd, I'd like to add on to John's if I if I can, Jordan. Sorry. Um, I I think what John's getting at. So the. The side elevation on your driveway side, um, you're you're extending that roof, and that roof is going to just tie in to the existing roof with no change to the elevation of that. Is that is that a fair statement? That's the way I read the drawings. I just that's what I believe is okay. Um, that's not what your section shows. Okay. Well, well and John, I was I was not sure if this the section drawing, which would is this drawing um, that was, it's in your application, but it's also, you know, this version has this soffit detail added. John, I'm, I was trying to figure out, John, if it's like above the mud room area, um, you know, cause there's like, there's, there's a small low sloped roof that's oh, like so an addition saying. that's, that's kind of between, the house has kind of like two hipped portions and then that central portion is extending out. Oh. The, yeah, as you can see in the photo here, um, this is the rear elevation as it stands right now. There are two essential wings um, uh -huh. on right. the rear, 
and the addition. The mudroom will be in the center with the screen porch on the left in this photo, but it will, it's not going to even it out. So there will still be a slight bump out. Um, and I believe that's what you're seeing is just some, some issue with line weights, uh, the yeah. sticking out of the house beyond. Well, then that should be an elevation, shouldn't it? <laughs> Instead of a section through it? Uh, well, maybe. I mean, the, the, you can see it a little better, John, if you look at the plan on 10, okay. page 10 of 25, you'll see the new wall is pushed and it projects out, you know, two and a half feet from the right side of this image that we're looking at. So I think there's, I think the section is trying to reconcile how the the new framing for the the screen porch and that new low slope roof for the mud room come together. Oh, okay, that's an odd way to do it. But okay, that's that's like the some, way I read that. Yeah, I just like some clarification on that. That's all. I don't know what that's I don't know what that's doing. Any additional questions for the applicant? Um, back, there was a comment from John about the the treatment of the screen porch posts. They're on the plan drawing. They're called out as six by six treated posts. Do you intend to stain or paint them? And I apologize if that's somewhere in the application and I missed it. But what what do you, do you what do you have in mind for the finish? Is it painted or stained? I believe we're painting that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but thank you. Not, are you wrapping them with anything? Wrapping them? So, like with aluminum or anything? No, well, I mean like with, with trim board around so, the outside. So, some, sometimes um, treated lumber does not take paint okay. that well. Right. And so you'll often see, and probably, you know, precedent of even historic houses is usually there's like a paint grade um, that's got a smoother, finer finish, a little bit straighter that can be applied and that gets painted. Usually treated lumber, you know, it's kind of a modern, you know, feat of engineering, but hasn't always existed, but it's, it's, it's wet. So unless you dry it out substantially, it, it, the paint doesn't usually stick to it. So just probably something to consider if you don't have the answer today, that's, that's okay. And we, yeah, we don't have the exact answer. Yeah. <clears throat> I you know, I mean, that's my concern. I mean, uh, pressure treated wood also kind of is notorious for <laughs> warping. So, um, I mean, well, I can I can discuss this when I when we get into. Any additional questions? How uh, do you know how much lower? It looks like there will be a step between your the finished floor in your house and the the floor of the porch, the screen porch. Uh, but I, I don't see, I mean, in this, in this section you provide, there's, you know, maybe it's a couple inches, uh, but it's just hard to tell. We don't have an answer for that. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Any additional questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, we'll close the evidentiary hearing, move to discussion. Curtis, what's your um, yeah. thought about requiring the pressure treated structure to be trimmed? In, in, where it's located, it's obviously new construction on a historic house. It's in a very private location. Um, I'm trying to think of examples in the neighborhood where it's left pressure treated, and I think well, we've seen quite I, a bit of that. That's why I wanted to ask you that, because you're the expert. Yeah, on I, think, I think there's actually quite a bit of raw treated stuff out there in the neighborhood. So huh. I don't think that's so much of an issue. Huh. Um, I mean, I... I mean, the drawings aren't great in terms of clarity on detail, so they leave leave a lot to be worked out, but I don't think they'd change um, the judgment on congruity of what they're going to do. Um, so it's 
more of a matter of just them getting a good outcome. Um, like for instance, where the six by six post engages with the addition, the mudroom addition, it's really, nothing's telling me how that happens there. Um, but I don't think that's something that necessarily impacts a judgment on the design and the congruity question. You feel that we could put these through with conditions? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think adding a condition that, for instance, paint, if any, be submitted to and approved by staff just covers us that way. And, um, and the details, it's more of a construction detail that I don't know that that changes our life in any way at all. And there is the question of the the proposed built area. There's mm -hmm. no real yeah. comparison to the other properties. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's really an issue. But it's hard to it's hard to say that without supporting information. <coughs> I mean, from the photos, it looks like the screen porch is going to be about as big as the hot tub. Is that what that is? No. no. Oh, it's just what is a it? cover over our lawn furniture. Oh, okay. Well, it'll be cover over the cabana, I guess, is what it is. Hmm? That the cabana. <laughs> uh, the gazebo thing. Gazebo. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it, it, we're not really changing, you know, built area given that currently there's masonry sitting there. And I don't know that that's going to drive anything either. Um, I mean, we're looking at a 14 by 13 foot screened in porch, really, when it comes right down to it. And a small infill for that mudroom. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm fine approving it with conditions okay. as it's done. Let's make it sure. I agree. So, do you want to make a motion? Sure. Um, I move that based on the information submitted in the application during the hearing, um, that the application be approved with the following conditions. One, that the screening be attached on the inside face of the screen porch and have the same appearance from both sides. Two, that following materials and specifications be submitted to and approved by staff prior to issu issuance of the uh, blue placard, a scaled edition eave section detail. I don't think that's terribly clear, so I want to keep that there for staff. Um, a final screen porch section detail, uh, window manufacturer specifications, including sections detailed and detailed drawings. Number three, that the following materials and specifications be submitted to and approved by staff prior to installation or construction. A, the final rear door specifications, including design, material, profile, and finish. B, gutters, downspouts, and French drain locations and specifications if applicable. C, exterior light specifications if applicable. D, paint selection if applicable. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the question before the committee's uh, approval of the application with the stated conditions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the uh, motion carries unanimously. Um, thank you for the work you've put in. The official decision will be uh, made at next month's meeting when the minutes are approved and signed, and you will be uh, informed of that, and the orders will be sent to you. So thank, thank, you. thank, thank you so you. much. All right, next, 603 Polk Street. This is application COA 0159-2022 in the Oakwood Historic District, uh, Nicholas and Emily Zond. Good evening. Uh, please state your name. Uh, Nicolas Zand. Uh, will you be presenting as well? I am. Uh, Ashley Morris, the architect. Okay. Uh, if both of you will be presenting, just uh, we'll raise your right hand and we'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right. Thank you. Is there any member of the committee who uh, has an interest in this matter or otherwise feels that they cannot be impartial or fair in the hearing of this case? Um, a disclosure. I'm, within, I'm on the um, notification list. 
We've had no conversations about this. I know nothing about this before. There's no relationship in, in terms of this project, so there's no conflict there. But I also want to note for the record, we did not receive a notification, so there might be a notification issue. Um, and I just want us to be squeaky. Um, so, uh, Mr. Attorney, I will uh, defer to you on, on that. Well, <clears throat> I think I'll have to, to refer this to staff. Just uh, have we got return receipts or any kind of evidence concerning the notice actually being delivered? And we're, up, we're on the list, so we, were, we would have <laughs> normally process-wise seen it. And that's just the reason why I'm bringing it up. It might be the post office itself. It, and, and Curtis, you did not receive your. Did not really. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it's kind of. Would weird. you like to weigh for the record any objection because no ab notice objection was because of lack of notice whatsoever. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear. We Unless understand we have some what's other happening. evidence that there was a there was actually some some error or snafu in the notice. Not yeah, yeah. Our, our process is simply that we provide the mailing list to the <coughs> applicant um, yeah. based on the 100 foot buffer yeah. that's defined, you know, through IMAPS. And we use that GIS software to get mailing addresses for each owner mm -hmm. and tenant if available. Um, and then stamped addressed envelopes are provided to us. We stuff those and send them out. It goes through. Uh, actually directly into the U.S. Post Office system because we don't have to meter that internally. Um, I will say we do get return mail very frequently, most especially for tenants. Um, so I think there are often issues with delivery. Uh, and when those come back, we assign those to their respective case folders as a part of the record. Good. All right. Well, hearing no objection, I think we will proceed. Um, and this time I'll recognize staff for their presentation. Sure. So this case is COA 159-2022 for 603 Polk Street in the Oakwood Historic District. Uh, the request is to remove a rear non-historic accessory structure, construct a new rear accessory structure, and refresh the existing gravel driveway. You can see here that this is a corner property on Polk and Elm. Uh, this is a view from Polk Street. Uh, of you looking towards the rear, you can see the existing accessory structure between the two houses there in the rear yard. And a view from the corner going around the side property line. Uh, and a view of the overall rear yard. The uh, small green structure with the logs, that is on the subject property. The taller accessory structure next to that with the doors is on the neighboring lot overall rear yard and this is just demonstrating uh, kind of the drop in elevation that exists between Elm Street and the rest of the rear yard here. Uh, no staff concerns but I'll answer any questions if you have. Uh, I've never seen <coughs> an application that had no staff concerns. <laughs> I'll add Ashley uh, typically does a very good job with her applications and <laughs> that there's your example. Okay um, next call on the applicant. Uh, if any presentation you'd like to make? I don't, I don't think so. I think we're we're good. Unless you, we're ha happy to answer any questions you have or concerns. All right. Thank you. Uh, are there any members of the public here who wish to speak in support of the application? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Anyone who likes to make any additional comments on the application? All right. Hearing none, we'll move to commissioner questions. Actually, I don't have any questions. I just have accolades. Um, I've never, like, like uh, Wes was just getting ready, had said, we've never seen, I've never seen any, um, no staff concerns on any application <laughs> that we've ever been presented. So, nice job. Thank you. True. <laughs> no questions. No questions. All right, hearing no questions, we will uh, close the evidentiary hearing and move to committee discussion. I'd like to just go straight to approval. Motion. Go ahead. I'll, I'll do it. Um, based, go ahead. <laughs> based on the information um, providing the application and actually nothing provided during the hearing, um, I move that the application be approved. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve uh, the application as presented. Uh, any discussion on the motion? 
Here you none. The question for the committee is approval of the application. All those uh, signify. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, congratulations. Thank you for the great work. Um, the official decision will be, will be made at next month's meeting when the minutes are uh, signed and they will be sent to you. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Next is 611 Polk Street. This is application COA 0001-2023. Um, property owner Susan Iddings. Uh, this is in the Oakwood Historic District. Are there any members of the committee who have an interest in the matter or otherwise feel that they cannot be impartial or fair in the hearing of this case? All right. Anyone who will be presenting, just please uh, come to the microphone and state your name. I'm Susan <coughs> Eddings. Mary Ryan, architect. All right. Um, will both of you be presenting? We'll be answering questions. Sure. Well, we'll go ahead and swear you in. If you pre please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. All right. At this time, we'll recognize staff for the presentation. All right. We are staying on Polk Street and moving just a few houses down. Um, that's just purely coincidence. It, this is KCOA um, 0001 2023 for 611 Polk Street is in the Oakwood Historic District. The nature of the request is to alter non-historic rear addition and porch, construct rear addition, install new window openings, change non-historic door opening to window, alter roof structure, remove rear brick walk, install solar panels, install four foot fence and gate, and install electric vehicle charging station. Um, you can see here it's about mid block on Polk Street. And this is a view of the property from Polk. And taking a walk around that property, this is from the driveway, which is the east side. Uh, this is a detailed shot of the front porch and the um, non-historic door opening now window that is proposed to be um, altered. Uh, this is a view of the rear porch and the existing rear addition. Um, looking from that same area back into the rear yard and from the rear yard looking back at the house. Um, these, the west side was very difficult to um, see uh, due to all of the shrubbery there, but these are two photos of the um, area talked about in the application where there's a problematic roof line, um, which you can see in this photo here. And again, um, Polk Street. Uh, so staff concerns were that analysis describing the relationship of neighboring properties built area, built mass or area to the proposed built mass and area were not provided. And typical um, material specifications and details that are often included as conditions were not provided. If you have <coughs> given to Perfect. Great. Right. We yeah. have brought today the relationship of the, pro of the neighboring properties. Ms. Eddings, you please uh, move the mic to your closer to your face, please. We have brought uh, what addresses the first issue of the staff. We brought that today for you to be able to look at the relationship of the neighboring properties built mass to the proposed built mass. Thank you. Is there uh, any additional information you'd like to present to the committee? Uh, we are here to answer questions. I'd like to reserve any comments till later if you do have certain specific concerns. Sure. And anything? About the material specifications, um, a lot of it is just matching existing. We tried to call it out in the elevations. Um, the details, there are a few details, but we are waiting until we get more into the project. All right, anything else? All right, thank you. Uh, are there any uh, members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application? Please come forward. Please state your name. How do you do? Chris Crew, 306 Elm Street. All right. Raise your hand, please, or right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. All right. 22 years ago, 
I owned the house next door to this for 12 years, and I'm familiar with that little funky bit of roof work back here, and I can uh, heartily endorse this as a preservation project to you know, ensure the longevity of this building. You know, I'm, I'm surprised, frankly, that it's still there, you know, 32 years later after it was put in. So, you know, absent the details of, of the finishes, this looks like a good idea to me, and I would recommend it. All right. Thank you. Uh, any additional members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the case? Anyone with additional comments on the application? All right, hearing none, we'll move to uh, committee uh, questions. I have nothing. I just, I have a curiosity question. Mm -hmm. Who's the, was the, do you know who designed the addition in 77? My ex-husband. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he is an architect. <laughs> ah, okay. And you said ex-husband. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've had to take care of it. <laughs> um, I love it. Will the PV panels be visible from anywhere? Which panels? The uh, photovoltaics on the roof. I went from the west side, the west side neighbor, but it's really tight. It'll be below the front. Can you hear me? It'll be below the front elevation. You won't see it from the front. And that has to be, I mean, that's still a detail that needs to be worked out. Sure. I'm curious about the Oriole window and just the, the motivation for it. I, it's not something you see a lot, <laughs> or that I'm, that I'm familiar with seeing a lot here. Um. Well, actually, it came from Pittsburgh. There's an old Victorian house that I know in Pittsburgh. That, that was the inspiration. <laughs> but it's to bring more light into her, her breakfast area. And we could do it with just a flat wall, but that just gets a little more light, and it's fun. Sure. It's just a curious question, <laughs> not, not a critique. Right. Any additional questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, we'll close the evidentiary hearing and move to committee discussion. I find it an easy yes. You find it what? An easy yes that I Yeah, I, I, I mean, it seems like find it's just, they're just correcting a lot of decisions. <laughs> I won't say bad or good, I'll just say decisions. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, who wants to make that motion? Well, I, I do have oh, okay. I do have one issue, and that is, I'm I'm surprised you're not more acquisitive about the solar panels. No, I I think they're just so unobtrusive. I mean, the location they've chosen for them. We we did have a case, you know, where they were visible from across the street, but I think that was more about their visibility than their placement. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In this case, this, this house also sits up from the street. Ah, it seems okay. like this is yeah. behind the ridge line, so True. yeah, there seems like a pretty good placement for it. Short of being in a in a, some kind of hovercraft, you're never going to see the thing. So, I mean, it's it's certainly something to keep an eye on, maybe for staff when they get that material, because. You maybe never know where you're really going to put those things until it's time to put them there. <laughs> True. But. Right. Yeah, especially the equipment that goes with them. Right. <clears throat> John, would you like to make that motion? I shall. Um, based on the evidentiary hearing and the facts presented in this case, uh, I move that we approve this application with the following conditions. Uh, that manufacturer specifications and section for, am I in the right one? Yes, uh, for the rear doors, uh, that drawings showing installation locations for gutters, downspouts, and product specifications, if any. Uh, C, that electro exterior lighting specifications and locations be provided. D, that location and screening for HVAC and mechanical equipment and uh, 
uh, any apparatus that deals with the solar panels be provided and solar panel and associated mechanical equipment. I've answered that question. Uh, dimensions and installation location. Um, that's it. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second and uh, propose a friendly amendment sure. that those items be provided to and approved by staff prior to installation or construction. Exactly. Okay. All right, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the question before the committee is approval of the application subject to the stated conditions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you for your work put, uh, placed into the application. Uh, the official decision will be uh, made at next month's meeting when the minutes are uh, approved and signed. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that little window thing you did is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. At this time, uh, I'm going to take a 10 minute recess. The committee will reconvene at 6 30. <laughs>
right. The COA committee is back in order. Uh, we will proceed next to 1115 West Lenore Street. This is application COA 0003-2023. Um, this is in the Boylan Heights Historic District. Ask you please uh, introduce yourself. Pardon? Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, Glenn White. All right. Anyone else uh, presenting? Uh, Courtney Evans, architect. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Raspberry, given that the property owner is a trust, is there any issue with uh, uh, the applicant needing counsel? I inquired of staff about that and understood there was an attorney involved in this. I am uh, executor of the estate of H. Glenn White, Jr., uh, trustee of three trusts related to H. Glenn White, Jr., and I'm also an attorney, although I went inactive a year ago. We, we've, uh, Mr. White, we just had a bar opinion handed down that relates to presentations before QJ boards by trustees for um, trust entities, the applicants in these cases, and uh, legal counsel was advised as required per the state bar, so that's why we're so sensitive at this point. I'm here to advise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also here to answer questions about history or current, and Courtney is going to discuss <laughs> the details of the project. Okay. Uh, before we proceed, is there any member of the committee who, have an, who has an interest in this matter or otherwise feel that they cannot be impartial in the hearing of this case? Nope. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I am on the notification list. Uh, I live directly across the street from this property. Um, I did receive the notification letter, so yeah. I can confirm that. Um, and um, do know the, the applicant and the architect, um, but neither have notified me of, or asked any questions of me prior to this, uh, this hearing. And I assume you feel that yeah. you can yeah. impartially hear the case. Any issues Correct. with uh, uh, with what Mr. Allen has laid out among the committee? Nope. Chairman, I just suggest you ask if anyone present objects. Does anyone present object to Mr. Allen uh, deciding this case? Hearing none, we shall proceed and I will uh, recognize staff for their presentation. All right, as you mentioned, this is case COA 003-2023 for 1115 West Lenore Street, which is in the Boylan Heights store district. Um, the nature of this request is to change a previously approved COA, which was COA 102-2021. Um, and the changes include altering the site configuration of the parking area, sidewalks, fencing, and accessory structures, and altering the accessory structure design. Um, you can see here this is a very large parcel in Bullen Heights. It is one of the more industrial parcels on the edge of the district. This is a view from Lenore Street. I don't have too many photos here. You get the idea. <coughs> um, staff concerns were that updated built area to open space calculations were not provided, and the standard some material specifications and details that are often approved as conditions were not provided. All right, at this time, the uh, applicant is uh, recognized to present uh, their application. Can I scroll through here? Is that how it works? Are there yes. any images? No. So the pictures you guys have, I don't have another presentation. I just assume you guys could pull up our application. Um, the open space calculations is actually shown on the civil drawing that was attached in that application. It's a small note. Um, but the existing space is like 72.85% built. And our proposed ex um, proposed built area is 72.76% built. So we're reclaiming some natural space, beautification, as it would be. Um, so that should handle that calculation. The material specs, I, I think that we can handle that with a review after this. I thought I'd attached everything that they asked for, but apparently I did not. So if you guys have specific questions, I can answer those and then provide documentation after this. Any any additional information? I don't think so. I oh. think those are the two questions. Okay. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the case? <coughs> Anyone with uh, who who would wish to make comments on the application? 
Hearing none, we'll proceed to committee questions. Synthetic turf. We're not using synthetic turf. You're not. All the areas will be either mulched or grassed. Okay. And what is the height of the fence along West Lenore Street? Let's see here. It's designed per your guidelines last time not to exceed 60 inches. Okay. And also the shrubs were a question there. I have a, a note from our landscape architect um, that says they're currently supposed to be skip laurels. Uh, which can grow to be taller than 60 inches, but they will be maintained to 60 inches, unless you guys have a problem with the species in which she's open to other options, like azalea, gardenia, or camellias. So we can, if you just tell us what you need, we can specify other things. My personal thought is that as long as it's five feet and not prickly, <laughs> we'll be fine. Okay. Um, I do have a question, a general curiosity question. What is the history of this site? <laughs> well, I can give you a binder about that thick one. I am sure you can. <laughs> how about the, how it, about the uh, less than It was actually version? the first industrial park in Raleigh, uh, and uh, it was formed in about 1918. And... Uh, the White family acquired the business that operated there and subsequently the property in 1938. Uh, it operated as a oil distribution uh, company, uh, heating oil, until about 1988. Oh. And uh, then after that, it has served as uh, basically a uh, leased property to contractors, lay down yard, um, that sort of thing, currently is leased to a, what I guess I'll call a landscape um, uh, contractor. Um, that brings it up to to present time. Uh, but if you want the history of it, I'd be happy to okay. <laughs> share it with you. Yeah. It's, uh, quite a storied property. It is zoned industrial uh, still to this day. It's never been rezoned. It's never been rezoned or applied for any other kind of other zoning. Is there it's any always, reason it's, to? It's, it's never been applied for any kind of other rezoning. It's always been industrial. No. Interesting. Hmm. Thank you. OK. Any additional questions from the committee? Uh, are the roof planes poly? Like semi or translucent poly? Yeah, they're proposed to be a bronze polycarbonate. Bronze. It's still semi transparent, it's just not clear fully. Okay. Uh, cell structure, polycarbonate or solid? It's the polycarbonate, like multi wall, like four wall system. Um, I think it's there's a specification shown in your drawings on one of the last two pages. It's not the standard two wall, it's like a really thick four wall that has a, a middle kind of adjoining piece that looks like a roof. I will give you a little bit of advice, yes. even though it's unwarranted. Be careful about the slope of that stuff and how you seal it, because once dirt gets in those cells, you're never gonna get it out, neither are you the moisture, and it's gonna mold. Right, okay. Just be careful about it. What kind of slope do you recommend? <laughs> no lower than 15%. And that's, I think that's it, even in there. And um, definitely try to seal up the cells on the ends very tightly before gotcha. you, yeah. Because I've even had to have contractors come back and, re and route out the dirt in each cell with a drill, mm -hmm. which was a pain. Yeah. So be careful. Yeah. Thank you. Courtney, a question about the light fixtures. So see there... Um, there's a spec in the application. I'm having a hard time locating them on the plan. Do you know how, just quantity, how many? Yeah, so we just have a couple of those down lights on the face of the building by the openings, by the doors, the windows. They're all the same fixture, uh, little small down lights. So there should be six on the street facing side and two 
on the south facing side. Okay, and and that is the the pole. It's it's like a narrow pole light. Oh up, no, sorry. Up. The ones on the wall are just like little tiny wall yeah, sconces. Yeah. Okay. The, there's the an existing uh, Duke light pole out there. Okay. And so the fixture shown in that application is just one we picked from their, you know, very limited selection of things. So you're going to replace the. We're going to replace the existing. Oh, fixture. just just that just one, one for one. There's two poles. We're going to replace one fixture and demo one. Pole. Okay. Understood. Thanks. Yeah. And on the same topic, color temperature, is that a 3K? Warm. Warm. Okay, so 3K. Yes. Uh, and um, I assume wattage-wise, is it? Uh, there seems to be a variety. Just a hint as to whether we're sort of lower wattage or higher wattage in the range. Do you know? For the ones on the building? Uh, for the pole ones. Oh, the pole light. So the the one major pole light is going to be whatever Duke installs. That's their bag. I'm not really sure what what that is. Any sort of other landscape lighting is just going to be low voltage, like along the pathways. So look, let me offer another bit of warning sure. from experience. Um, ride Duke and to make sure you do get the warm white because what comes through sometimes from them isn't warm white, although gotcha. it's labeled it. Okay. And um, I would also evaluate the cutoff of what shows up mm -hmm. because sometimes that is not what happens <laughs> any additional questions from the committee just a comment i like your drawing style oh cool thank you <laughs> Hearing none, uh, we'll close the evidentiary <laughs> hearing and move to committee discussion. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. I do too. Um, I think just a mechanical mechanic thing um, in doing a uh, we'd be approving with potent with conditions, and there's some outstanding conditions. Um, I guess this is for RAS. Do we need to enumerate the outstanding conditions or we can just say that the original conditions are still in place and these are additional conditions? I think the latter would be fine. Okay. Um, I don't really know how to say this, but because I, you know, I am in favor of approval, but it's, is it because it's so fully outside sort of the congruity of the neighborhood that we're not really evaluating that it's just it's just a very different typology not really evaluating what? I mean it's an interesting question it's, actually. it's it's pretty different from everything else in Boylan Heights I mean I mean the building itself uh, the site can't can't really speak to but um, I, I know when we evaluated it the first time around, we had a lot of discussion about it being on an industrial site and just sort of being a modern representation of that and viewing that as the rationale because it speaks to the history of the site. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not matchy-matchy with the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I think zoning helps, you know, helps it. Um, you know, feel congruous with the use that's been there in the past. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the history of the site certainly seems to suggest it's always kind of been an outlier in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I just want to softball I'm that. With you. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm glad else. you brought that up because how much of this, how much of this has been changed from the last application, and what if if the building was approved in the last application, that's not changed, so we it's outside of our purview in this one, no? True, other there are details that have changed based on the staff presentation of it, so it's, it is somewhat of a different beast, but conceptually it's very similar, you know? It's my read of it. Okay. I don't, I, I wasn't yeah. part of this one before, yeah. How was I here then and you guys weren't? I don't know. Maybe it was a day you weren't here. <laughs> yeah. Chairman, the only thing I'll add to that uh, <clears throat> discussion is that 
by law, the actual use being made of a property in the district is off limits for review yep. in the course of determining the question of congruity or not. Okay. And the fact that the commercial use of this property, the, the what has been going on, that's part of the history. Mm -hmm. It's not a very large leap that that makes it a part of the character mm -hmm. of the district. So um, it's a little bit of a, you know, requires a little bit of, of, of finesse. I mean, the guidelines don't tell you exactly how to wrestle with that that issue, but the actual use has been established and a reevaluation of the use is not something that the committee is authorized to get involved with. So, so Raz, would, uh, would approval... If you can't, if it's, we're not allowed to evaluate based on use, would approval then, um, you know, I, I know precedent is not the only thing that we're you, able to use to evaluate future cases, but would it allow, say, future cases to have similar components to this? And, you know, if they are in the, the residential zoning portion versus this is an IX, you're saying that doesn't matter. So could someone come along? Would it make an easier case for an accessory structure that's like this application to fall elsewhere within this district? It's hard to give you an incisive response okay. on that. Um, you know, I would say this is a modification application. It is. Uh, and at least conceivably, there could be modifications that were so significant that it would almost require a reevaluation of the of the of the proposal. Hard to distinguish revisions to essentially a um, a redo. But I would say at the very least, unless that's the case here, which I sense you don't think it is, no. you, you should defer to some extent at the very least to the overall conclusion that was was reached when this was first considered mm -hmm. that the general proposal is not incongruous with the special character. Well, and I, I think it's reasonable also to just get into the record that um, this lot is particularly unique, both in shape and scale relative to the rest of the historic district. And the approval of this on this lot is also based on the lot. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be hard for somebody to bring that forward in a lot that's a fraction of the size of this. Well, and I, I, could, I could also argue that the, simp the simple quality, not, sim not that it's a simpleton, but a simp the simplicity of the design g could be argued as a garden wall as much as it could be a building given its proportion length and height. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, part of why I ask is there are other, I would say, like similarly maybe commercial properties like at the other end of Lenore um, mm -hmm. that are different from, you know, that differ from the special character of the neighborhood or the district that I, you know. So I want to be consistent if those do come across this committee at some point, I, you know, I want to be careful about at least what we say because I do want to be clear. I, I think, I think we should approve this, but yeah. perhaps that's also partially a topic for when we're looking at uh, revisions to special character essay that we address this Absolutely. condition in Boylan Heights. <coughs> okay. Absolutely. Any further discussion on the application? Appears we're ready for a motion. I will try. Um, Based on the information uh, presented in this hearing and the evidentiary evidence provided, uh, and that, hang on a second, two seconds here. Per the staff analysis um, and report that we approve this application with the following conditions. That the following be provided and pro approved by staff prior to installation or construction uh, drawings showing installation locations for gutters and downspouts, uh, B, exterior lighting specifications, C, concrete color finish for walkway and plaza. Uh, two, that details and specifications for the following be provided to staff prior to installation or construction. Gutters and downspouts, 
B, revised privacy and street side fence designs. D, or excuse me, C, exterior lighting including location on the building, if any. D, specifications and location for site lighting. Three, that any revisions or deviations to any portion of the as submitted work shall be submitted to staff prior to installation or construction for review and approval. Four, that a tree location, a tree protection plan be implemented <coughs> in place and remain in place for the duration of the construction. Five, uh, that the synthet synthetic turf uh, be removed, which it is, and noted by the presentation. Six, that the signage, if any, be submitted in a future COA application. Seven, that the height of the fence along West Lenore be no taller than 60 inches, which has been stated in the presentation. <clears throat> Eight, that the shrubs along the sidewalk be kept pruned to a maximum height of 60 inches, as noted in the presentation. Nine, that the privacy fence not have horizontal pickets. Motion. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the question before the committee is approval of the application subject to the conditions as stated by Commissioner Reese. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. The uh, official decision will be made at next month's meeting when the minutes are approved and signed, and that uh, order will be forwarded to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much. You. <clears throat> All right, next up is 1024 Dorothea Drive. This is COA 0004-2023. Uh, property within the Boylan Heights Historic District and uh, an applicant that we are all familiar with. I think I'll just go ahead and note for the committee that uh, Mr. Bailey is a former member of the commission, former <laughs> member of this committee, so we are all aware of him. <laughs> and I don't think any of us would have any problem uh, hearing this application. I don't think he would have any issue with that either, but put that on the record. I would also ask that you potentially apply that to the architect, Janine McAuliffe, who was also a previous member of this committee. Thank you for making me aware of that. As a new member of the commission, I did not know that, but uh, thank you. I thought she was cool. All right. Uh, anyone who will be presenting, please come forward. Uh, raise your right hand. Uh, we'll go ahead and swear you in. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Great. Uh, and anyone who will be presenting, please introduce yourselves. Janine McAuliffe from RE Design Build. Anyone else? Travis Bailey, homeowner. Melissa Bailey, homeowner. Uh, Brian Underwood, RE Design Build. All right. I'll note the property owner is present, and at this time I'll recognize staff for their presentation. All right. This is case COA 4 2023 for 1024 Dorothea Drive in the Boylan Heights Historic District. The request is to construct a new accessory structure, relocate the existing rear shed, construct a rear patio, replace the rear wood fence, and replace non historic windows. Uh, this is a view from Dorothea Drive. There is a shared driveway just to the left uh, here. Um, and this is a view, just multiple views from the street, views toward the rear of the lot. Uh, this is from the back of the driveway. <coughs> Looking at the existing rear yard, you can see the shed proposed to be relocated here on the left of the photo. Uh, an overall of the rear yard facing to the east. Uh, and a look, the uh, the fence pictured at the rear of the yard here is not actually on the property <coughs> line. There's some additional space there uh, toward the adjacent alleyway. Um, more overall rear yard. And looking back toward the rear facade of the existing house. Staff concerns uh, were that no evidence of historic accessory structures with similar relationships to the main house were provided um, or of historic structures with similar size and scale. Um, the effect of the proposed building scale um, may be exacerbated by the site topography rising toward the east and um, the lack of any dormer insets on the rear dormer from the alley uh, and then just typical material specifications typically approved through conditions. If you guys want to scroll a little or anything, go ahead. It is time the applicants recognize for their presentation. So we did bring some additional materials um, trying to address those 
um, items that we were just hearing about. Um, three sheets, additional materials. Page one is um, speaking to the footprint of our accessory structure and showing that we have um, located on the map here, um, at le we've identified at least three accessory structures of similar sizes in the Boylan Heights district. <coughs> Additional material number two was speaking of the siting of our accessory structure. Um, there are alleys, of course, in Boylan Heights, so some structures are placed with proximity to the alley. Ours, which is not a garage, um, is sited um, within, um, away from that alley edge. And so we just identified about 14 comparable lots in the neighborhood on that Sanborn map that do not address the alley with their accessory structures. And then additional materials number three, just in case we speak of um, the size of this in general, is that um, we were just bringing the UDO just to show the allowable square footage of ADUs that we were um, trying to be very sensitive to bring that size down for this particular location. So we've um, reduced it by about 35%, or bring it down to about 70% of what is allowable by UDO in order to um, be sensitive to the um, scale of our ADU. Any additional information? That's that's all the additional information. Okay. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application? Any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to the case? Anyone who would like to make comments on the application? All right, seeing none, we'll move to committee questions. I've got a couple. So just trying to understand the, and I, I know we're not here to evaluate the UDO requirements, but then I, my wheels started spinning with, you know, the other square footages provided. Mm -hmm. So the first page you provided, the new mm -hmm. information, the the proposed ADU size, is that the built area is 572? I'm, is that the footprint or is that over, it is a story and a half, right? Or two stories? There is a um, storm but it's the height of it is such that it would not qualify towards square, footage. square footage. Okay, so that's, that, just that's that where I was going with. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a second that door. Just for um, it's a storage loft. Um, for the benefit of anyone who might be uh, watching via live stream, we heard you loud and clear, whoever uh, oh. that was. But please come up and, and uh, address <laughs> the mic and address us, please. Thank you. Okay, and then second question. I had a lot of concerns prior to seeing this page too, which has a lot of, um, you know, examples in the neighborhood of the placement um, being not on the the you know rear edge or alley. I live close by. I actually didn't didn't know that there were that many examples, so that's that's helpful. I think a lot of them have probably perished over time. Uh, I guess my only other question is just about, and, and this isn't really the focus, I don't think, of the staff report or m much of the um, much of the application itself, but I think the application points to replacing the existing replacement windows. Is that correct? We're doing sash replacements, and they're not original windows I, at this I, point. I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm aware of when this house was oh. um, altered originally. Um, is I'm sorry if I missed it, is there a proposed elevation of those? Um, we don't have drawing, uh, are you looking for specs you're well, asking I, for or? Would you, would you be willing to consider, I believe they were six over one previously, they were replaced with one over one. Um, would you be willing to consider a six over one if that was a condition? Um, we haven't spoken to whether or not we would go back. So the original being six over one being what you'd prefer to come back with. Um, I think we would certainly look into what was available with those sash replacements. Um, okay. We are trying to get the historical detail on those. Yeah. Um, I, I, 
feel like for yeah you know within the district it's it, it is a character defining feature and then are doors included in that or in in your replacement or just sash it's it's not doors am i right okay that, that's all of my that's all of my questions <clears throat> So um, it's not two-story. Correct. Because we don't have, um, it's less than six foot, or I'm sorry, it's less than seven foot ten, which doesn't qualify as square footage okay. as a floor area. Okay. doesn't count. So we've really tried to bring that height down yeah. enough so that there's just some loft storage space up there. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Any additional questions from the committee? Curtis? No. Nope. Jordan? No. All right. Uh, this time we'll close the evidentiary hearing and move to committee discussion. It's tall. Well, yeah. It's, it's, it's on a hill. It's tall. I was going to say, I. I struggle with the placement on the site. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've been issued a diagram with a lot of similarly placed examples, so I feel like there's there's evidence for it. Architecturally, I don't love where the ADU is placed, but that's not yeah. that's not right. why I'm here. If they even if they move it back to the alley to kind of satisfy that re request, it just gets getting taller because of the hill. It does, but it would also I think visually separate the two. I mean, mm. you know, maybe. I, I think that I think the the 3D views, you know, are probably negatively impact our our feelings on it by being clear representation of the scale. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would think that the view from the street actually, the st accessory structures gets diminished because of where you are relative to it. Perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's actually what gave me comfort with this. Initially, when I was looking at the plans, I had the same reaction. Yeah. That, that's a big building right behind another building. Uh, but then seeing the evidence as far as previous location of structures, um, that certainly um, provide supporting evidence of congruity and then just visiting the site and looking back there and you know if again it's the perspective is our friend on this one mm -hmm. i mean they've responded uh, and yep. addressed the guidelines yes and so from that aspect i i don't have any um any hesitancy to say that we approve this application i mean i look at I, i'm looking at this drawing page 16 of 32 um the perspective from the street mm -hmm. and i i uh, at first it gave me heartburn a little bit because of the height and the kind of size of the addition in the back but i think that given that they have their alternatives to this are to push it back <laughs> mm -hmm. further away from the building only increases the height issue, which causes yet another problem. So it's kind of like a water balloon where you poke one side and it pokes out the other. Um, so I think that I'm, I'm satisfied. I agree with Rob's comments about the six over one. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, I, would, I would suggest that as we're looking at potential conditions, uh, we strike potential conditions two and three because they're answered by the drawings and um, answered by the evidence. Um, yes. I, I would note that I don't think we have historic garages noted specifically. We have some accessory structure evidence, um, but not necessarily those of garages. And this is... Um, Again, to reiterate our conversation from an earlier application, we, we don't review the use of a building, um, but garages typically are accessory structures that are larger in size mm -hmm. within a neighborhood. Um, so it's more um, review of what type of 
I guess what what a, a building of that size would typically be treated like on on sites uh, within the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This one does. I mean, it's, it's no bigger than a two car garage. This one, correct? Yeah, I think. Twenty five by twenty five. I mean, a two car uh, garage would be a minimum. I think Aaron might be saying, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but that the placement of a garage or building of this footprint is typically closer to the edge of an alley. Um, uh, may, oh. Yes, I, I won't advocate any more one way or the other. I'll yeah, just okay. point you to the, um, the staff concerns. I, yeah. I kind of rounded them out to make sure they all fit on one slide in the presentation, but I think it's, it's spelled out a little more clearly there. I mean, I, I will say this. I, uh, this is the first accessory sh dwelling I've gotten the opportunity to kind of review in a historic neighborhood, and I'm glad to see it happening because I think that these kinds of projects are beneficial to us as a society as much as they are anything else. Um, we, we did see one on Kinsey since I've been on, John, but you might have not been available that, oh. that, that month. But gotcha. Um, just saying that yeah. for precedent, but it was located right on the, you know, rear property edge, yeah, yeah, alley true. edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we also saw one in Oakwood yeah. too that had a similar situation right on the edge of the property in that mm -hmm. case. But see, again, I keep going back. I'm sorry. I, th I think part of staff's concern is, is not only its placement, but how similar in proportion and scale it is to the main house. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really distinguish itself, I guess, as a accessory dwelling might otherwise, if it were a garage, hypothetically, if that, if that makes sense. I mean, it, that staff didn't. has already said they're not going to reinterpret what they wrote, but that's, that's sort of the gist of it. You know, it sort of looks too much like a house to not be a house. Is if, that bad? Well, I, <laughs> I don't know if we're here to decide whether it's good or bad. Yeah, I mean, would you feel differently if it was attached? Because I don't think that necessarily would make it better if it was an, an addition that went. I think some of that, I, that initial heartburn you feel at looking at that perspective would, you might feel differently if it were attached or, or if it were even closer, although I assume there's some uh, UDO restraints about how close it can be to the original house. I mean, even the um, the example they provided about aligning new and old roof ridges is actually an addition, not a uh, separate building. True. Well, and in their additional materials, uh, number two, I mean, there's evidence of accessory units that are on a lot line, but then there's also evidence of other accessory units that are in the middle of the lot, and there's some with two um so i don't think where they are proposing to place the structure is completely without uh precedent in the district yeah i, I mean i kind of assume that the placement of it is more out of necessity than anything else is i mean that's i could be wrong from, about is, that I, that's where i was coming from i said it, uh, again uh for them to get it in line with the edge of the property the height has to go up so high that it becomes more of a problem than if it's brought back down. So I think they're trying to find the best solution for Check the as many least amount. As they can. Yeah, with the least amount of scale impact that it can possibly have. And um, I, again, I go back to they have presented the evidence. Yeah, they have, and and I I think looking at like, uh, COA seven. The west elevation of the accessory structure it's you know it's clearly not trying to mimic the existing structure it's right. it's clearly a simplification of it and it's clearly from our current time as opposed to a sense of false history so i think all of those speak towards its congruity mm -hmm. um and i honestly don't know what else i would do to minimize it and still have the functionality so right. um my my inclination is to approve with conditions I agree. Take it away. 
want me to do it? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, I move that based on the application and the evidence presented during the hearing, we approve the application with the following conditions. One, that any new post holes or greening work within the trees critical root zone be dug manually in tree roots larger than one inch caliper that are encountered while digging shall receive clean final cut using tools designed for the purpose such as loppers. Roots larger than two inches shall not be cut without consultation and recommendation from an ISA certified arborist. Condition number two, that the replacement windows um, on the main structure uh, B6 over ones to mimic the historic windows. I'm going to have renumber this in my head, so fix, correct me if I'm wrong. Three, that the standing seam metal roofs have uh, 15 to 20 inch wide flat pans with no stradations, maximum one inch tall true vertical ribs, and very low profile ridge caps if applicable. Uh, let's see, four, that the fiber cement siding match existing house and exposure and profile. Five, that accessory structure window and door materials be either all wood or aluminum clad wood. Six, that the masonry site walls and site steps um, it just moved, okay, be constructed of red brick masonry or poured concrete that match typical conditions in the district. Seven, that the following materials and specifications be submitted to and approved by staff prior to issuance of the blue placard. A, uh, revised scaled site plan and elevation drawings. Uh, nope, strike that. Um, a, uh, scaled eave section, detailed drawing. B, manufacturer's window specifications, including dimensioned um, section details. C, manufacturer's door specifications, including dimension section details. <coughs> Eight, that the following materials and specifications be submitted to and approved by staff prior to installation or construction. A, standing seam roof specification, including material dimensions, profile, and color. B, trim specifications including dimension, profile, and color. C, asphalt shingle roof specifications including product and, and color. D, final site wall and step specifications including material, pattern, and color. E, mini split system specifications including dimensions, mounting height, and color. F, complete RHDC paint schedule and physical paint samples if not matching existing house. G, gutter downspouts, gutter and downspout locations and specifications if applicable. H, site lighting specifications if applicable. Is there a second? Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the question before the committee is approval of the application subject to the conditions as stated. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Uh, Note that's a uh, no. Yeah, no. sorry. Um, I'm just trying to count how many there are of us here. One, one in opposition. There you go. Thank you. Uh, motion's approved. Uh, congratulations. <coughs> uh, thank you for the work that you've put in. Uh, the the official decision will be made at next month's meeting when the uh, minutes are approved and signed. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Last okay, but not least. One. 525 Watauga Street. This is COA application 0005-2023 within the Oakwood Historic District. Uh, property owner applicant is Caitlin and Stephen Taylor. I ask that anyone who will be presenting this application please come forward and state your name, please. Caitlin Taylor, homeowner. Stephen Taylor, homeowner. Lewis Cherry, architect. Elizabeth Rue, uh, I'm with Lewis Cherry Architecture. All right, thank you. Is there a member of the commission who has an interest in the matter or otherwise feels that they cannot be impartial or fair in the hearing of this case? All right, hearing no, we'll proceed with the staff presentation. All right, this is KCOA 5 2023 for 525 Watauga Street in the Oakwood Historic District. The request is to remove the existing side porch and storage room, uh, construct a one and a half story addition with a one story open air breezeway connector, construct a one story side storage room, install mechanical equipment, remove the existing fence, and construct a low stone site wall with a metal fence topper 
remove the existing driveway, construct new paver driveway and walkway, construct rear stepping stone path, install exterior light fixtures, and install tree uplighting. You can see from the IMAPS image here that this is sort of a corner property. It's uh, on Watauga Street across from the cemetery, um, and then the side north property line is along Leonidas Court, which is a non-historic infill area in Oakwood. This is an image of the existing house as viewed from Watauga Street. Uh, looking again from the side, and this is the more visible area from Leonidas Court. Full side elevation here at looking at the north, and this is the rear area with the existing tree toward the corner. Rear yard where the addition is proposed to be constructed. And a better view of that overall yard. Uh, and this is around the side of the house on the south side where the uh, storage room is proposed to be constructed uh, and looking out towards Leonidas Court. So staff concerns are the relevance or not of the neighborhood evidence provided. Um, there was a lot of uh, evidence from the neighborhood, so if you have any specific concerns for staff, we can dig into research on those questions. Um, the north-south addition width and the street-facing fenestration pattern, the addition's mass at the zero lot line location, the fence wall features, overall height, and its proposed configuration, congruity of certain design details, there's a list here to consider, um, and then full typical project specifications through conditions. Um, but actually... You had a presentation, right? Oh my God. All right, the applicant has the floor for their presentation. Um, let's see. Can we go to the staff concerns sure. sheet? That? That oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd go through these quickly. Um, in terms of relevance of <laughs> the, the evidence, I, I guess I, I will just ask you to provide questions if you have specific um, you know, concerns about, about that. Uh, the addition width and the street-facing fenestration pattern, um, I do have some specific response to that. And, um, here's the site plan, and the the width of the um, addition is the same as the house. If you look at the enc the enclosed space, there is an outdoor area that's in in this location that is uh, partially enclosed. But uh, the point of of that, as I understand it, is scale relative to the existing house and its um, you know deference to the main structure and if you look at this drawing I think you can see it uh, it's clearly deferential to the existing structure and then I have another um, image here which shows it in context on the the street so I'm not really sure what the concern would be with the width. It's not wider than, and it is, um, I think, meets the intent of the uh, guidelines as far as I can tell. So that was that one. And then, um, let's see. Oh, the fenestration pattern. So yeah, so looking at this uh, elevation that faces Leonidas Court, um, along this edge, which is f facing the cars at the driveway, so, so there's not a, uh, a, a view in there. That's just where a car would be parked in front of that. What we've done is we've got essentially openings in lieu of uh, windows. So there's an open breezeway 
here. This is all open, this area, and then there's a screen wall behind. And then we're using slatted screen walls to partially uh, define and create some privacy at these openings. In this case, it's a screen for uh, the trash and recycling. And in this lo location here, there's an outdoor shower there. And so these, uh, it, it is a type of fenestration. It's just not a typical window. Then there is a, a window that is in the gable form. And so um, that's, that's what we're proposing in, in response to that. Um, On um, the addition mass at the zero lot line location, um, we we did provide a graphic that I think describes in in your handout, um, and I'm not sure the page number of that, but um, there's a, an added sheet that basically looks at I think a pretty comprehensive um, examples of very very similar conditions throughout the neighborhood so I, I would assume that the concern would be that it's atypical or uh, extraordinary in some way um, the fence wall feature overall height and configuration we have uh, the, the fence is 36 inches it's a very um, typical metal picket fence and we are proposing a uh, maximum of 18 inches uh, low retaining wall that the fence would sit on to establish a more usable grade in the yard, which is very typical in the neighborhood. And we did provide some additional examples of, of that condition. <coughs> um, and then the congruity of design details, uh, this is in, uh, Oakwood Green, uh, it is a, um, all, all homes that were b designed and built from 1987 to 2010, I believe. And so this is an, an addition to a non-historic house. Uh, and it, you know, we're, what we're doing is providing the details and basically the design elements that are referential but are clearly not explicitly mimicking any historic details. I, I can't see that that would be really even appropriate in, in my opinion. So that you can, you know, judge for yourself as far as the, um, you know, specifics of that. But um, there are a number, stained soffits are, are common. Uh, there are plenty of examples of uh, houses with uh, trim, you know, no casing around exterior windows. That's that's also uh, common, in which we provided examples of all of these. The foundation we did um, modify that and and are matching the brick foundation for the uh, that fr from the house, and then the rear entry. Formality, I'm actually not exactly sure what that means. The driveway pavers we changed to be brick pavers and it passed around the brick for you to um, inspect. Um, tree uplighting we eliminated and, and the roof to seal proximity, uh, that we feel comfortable with. That, that's a, a technically a, a good detail and uh, I'm not, I actually, I'm not exactly sure what the um, objection to that was. And then we did supplement the specification so that I think we have everything that is um, being provided that as, a, as a full specification for that. So I think, I think with that, I would like to entertain any questions or... All right, thank you. Uh, any members of the public who wish to speak in support of the application? Any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to the case? All right, please come forward.
Please state your name. My name is Doug Irving. All right. Uh, please uh, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. You may proceed. I've brought uh, some figures and documents, I think 10 copies. I hand those to staff. Certainly. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, I'm saving everyone some headaches. I've prepared some comments that I'll, I'll, I'll read for you. So I'd like to thank you all for your time and service on the committee. Uh, I, together with my wife, Katie, own the property of 604 Le Leonidas Court, which is the uh, neighboring property to the subject property. Um, our property shares its eastern property line with the, uh, with the subject property's western property line. Uh, in the submitted COA, this property has a proposed zero setback and full encroachment on the, the established five-foot setback for an accessory structure as defined in 6.7.2 of the uh, Unified Development Ordinance. A zero setback or any encroachment of, on that setback requires a close coordination between neighbors for the construction and maintenance of the proposed structure. The plans were first shared with us post-submission to the RHDC uh, roughly a week and a half ago. And there are currently no standing agreements for access to our property, the removal for a shared property on this property line, or for protection of our mature crate myrtle tree on the northeast corner uh, of our lot, which doesn't show up in any of the design plans submitted to as part of the COA. My primary issue with this submission is the proposed encroachment into the five foot setback. This shifts the space afforded by the setback to construct and maintain the property onto my driveway which is our only location reserved for off-street parking. In the short term, this creates a need to construct the structure from our property. Longer term access would also be required from us or any future owner to maintain the structure. There should therefore be uh, compelling reasons, in my opinion, uh, uh, for any encroachment into the setback and should especially be the case for a structure of the, of the proposed size and scope. I've carefully reviewed the application and I will focus the remainder of my comments on the contextual justification and the congruity of the proposed structure. Uh, there are two relevant issues that I will discuss here uh, in the submitted COA pertaining to the contextual justification and congruity of this structure. Uh, the first issue is that applicable examples of zero lot line buildings have not been provided per UDO requirements. Here I'm referring to uh, 5.4.1.E.1, which I don't probably need to read it to, but refers to the minimum and maximum setbacks within the general historic overlay district, and it shall be congruous with setbacks of any typical rail-related nearby building within one and a half blocks and then within the overlay district, dot, 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 dot. So the applicant submitted nine photos of the structures constructed uh, on or near property lines. Um, the properties submitted were 222 North Bloodworth, which is greater than two blocks west, 327 Oakwood, which is greater than two blocks west, 302 East Jones, which is greater than three and a half blocks south, 504 North Person, which is greater than three and a half blocks west, 404 North Bloodworth, which is greater than two blocks west, 408 North Bloodworth, which is greater than two blocks west, 411 Oakwood, which is greater than one and a half blocks west, 401 East Jones, which is greater than three and a half blocks south, and 502 Polk, which is the closest ex example, but is still greater than one and a half blocks to the west. None of these examples are within one and a half blocks and should not be considered as well related per the requirements of the UDO. And I've provided a diagram uh, and map illustrating uh, the relation of the uh, subject property to the submitted photos. <clears throat> similarly, similarly uh, the applicant submitted earlier Sanborn maps intended to show structures constructed at or near property lines. The first submitted map includes an area bounded by Polk to the north and Lane to the south, Person to the west and Elm to the east. Only one small quadrant of this map near Polk, Oakwood, and East and Elm is within one and a half blocks of the subject property as stipulated by the UDO. Of the properties in this area, the vast majority of near zero rear lot line encroachments are for small one-story outbuildings that are much smaller in footprint than what the applicant is proposing. Additionally, all of the structures are indicated to be one story. Further, as the map is undated, it's not clear which, if any, of the near zero, re zero rear lot line structures are actually contributing to the neighborhood. The second map includes an area bounded by Lane to the north, Edenton to the south, Bloodworth to the west, and Elm to the east. 
The nearest corner of that area is greater than two and a half blocks south of the subject property and should not be considered as well related per the requirements of the UDO. Therefore, the application as presented includes no contextual justification as required by the guidelines and the UDO for a near zero rear lot line of a multi-story structure of the size and scope proposed by the applicant. My second issue are aspects of the design that are presented as contributing to the compatibility of the proposed structure cannot be constructed as proposed. The design as presented does not call out dimensions from the property line to the face of the exterior wall, the face of the windows at the second story dormer, and the furthest projection of the eave. Based on the graphic scale provided in the drawings, all of these appear to be substantially less than three feet from the property line. If that's the case, the proposed windows cannot be installed as shown per the North Carolina Residential Code Table R302.1, which I've provided below, which says that wall openings are not permitted in walls less than three feet from a property line. Therefore, if the proposed windows are necessary to meet the congruity standard but, not legally, uh, it, it, but cannot legally be installed, the resulting construction will be incongruous. In summary, this COA does not provide any compelling contextual justification to support the construction of a multi-story structure addition of this size and scope that encroaches into the established five-foot setback as described in the UDO for the uh, general historic overlay district. Placement of the structure in this setback may also lead to issues of incongruity of the structure. Um, and it, I haven't listed this here, uh, I, but you know, I'm, it also puts the structure within two feet of a mature crepe myrtle tree that has the largest stem is 17 inch DBH on top of other things. I know that's not a protected tree, but it's my tree. And I, I, I don't appreciate the structure being in, within the critical root zone of that tree. So. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate uh, you hearing my concerns on the COA. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask him a question? Good evening. My name is Fred Belladin, uh, 711 Gaston Street. Um, I'm actually here just to speak to the zero or near zero lot line setback conditions as well. Um, wanted to offer two perspectives on that. One is a former commission member. This is something that we dealt with a lot on the COA committee. Uh, in my experience, it generally fell into two camps. Um, specifically, we started with the underlying setbacks, and if there was justification to be within the setback, it usually fell into one of two camps. One, it would be an existing house structure that we were extending or matching a really a fully realized built condition within the neighborhood. Or two, sometimes we were dealing with small outbuildings where if you were a foot or two shy of the five foot setback, you could still maintain and access them. To the best of my knowledge, those are the only similar conditions that we approved during my time on the, on the commission. Um, so obviously my concern here is establishing a precedent that um, the underlying setbacks are not important or relevant. Um, speaking to some of the contextual evidence, uh, I also took a look and I would share the adjacent homeowner's opinion on what was provided. It sounds like some additional information may have been provided, which is great, if so. Um, obviously, again, as a former commissioner, my question would be, have they provided evidence of what the actual dimensions are? Have they provided evidence of whether they're contributing structures or not? Have they provided evidence of comparable scale, footprint, and mass overall and height? And have they provided evidence related to rear setbacks? Because there are a number of conditions related to side setbacks between buildings, but very rarely do we see a self-created condition with an addition or new construction pushing to a rear setback line? Um, and then finally, as a licensed architect, I'll echo the basic building code requirement that limits openings within three feet of property lines. Thanks much. I didn't uh, catch your name. I'm sorry, I was sure. asking. my uh, name is Fred Belladin. All right, I'm gonna swear you in retroactively. Um, <laughs> Do you, Absolutely. do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you've provided is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Irving, uh, Commissioner Reese would like to ask you a question about your testimony. If you could, uh, if you'd like to answer a question, you can come back down and proceed. My only question was of the examples that um, you noted in here. Did you also take the extra step because you're going to save me some homework <laughs> of which of those? Uh, of those ones that are outside of the one and a half foot or one and a half block radius um, or even in within the radius, how many of those are contributing structures versus non-contributing structures? Uh, um, 
And uh, or did you even? I, I, I have that? not. I, I have not. In that realm of the neighborhood, I would guess that the majority of them that are all outside the one and a half block. My are, guess are, is that they're are contributing, contributing structures, yeah, but exactly. I, I can't say that. I've well, looked at that. It, yeah. The reason I asked is that it builds the case more that you're using evidence that is contributing to the historical nature of the neighborhood versus examples that don't. In the realms that they're in in that neighborhood, my guess would be uh, yeah, that I, I did I look at the inv I did review the inventory, but I did not check off each of those properties because they were outside the one and a half, whether they're right. contributing. But my exactly. guess would be that all of them are contributing. Great. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Are there additional members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to the case? Uh, are there any members of the public with questions or comments on the application? All right. Uh, at this time, the applicant, uh, you do have an, uh, an opportunity to provide rebuttal to uh, what we've heard from the members of the public. Thank you. Um, I guess a couple of things. One, the tree protection that the owners are happy to provide any, you know, necessary tree protection that would protect the crepe myrtle, and that can be solved. Uh, we had found a, a, a few examples that are within the one and a half block that are not all contributing structures. In some of the in Oakwood Green, which is on the one of the handouts that you have of, of a um, very limited lot line, we're not you know on the lot line we are actually set back one foot um in terms of the window issue and and the building code those the windows that are on that um proximate to the lot line were really added to it, we don't need those windows they were added to uh, uh address a staff concern about fenestration and you know a sort of a more blank facade so those were um, or, the, or those are not necessary for the for the project and we would be happy to take take those out if those are a problematic um, you know other, otherwise uh, it I, I felt like we had found good examples of uh, very similar and proximate um, setback but you know, it's it's a one and a half story addition, um, twenty feet five inches tall. It's you know not a, not a tall building. Um, it, are, there, are there specific questions relative to the to the uh, presentations in opposition that that you would like to? If uh, if that's discuss? all you have to provide in rebuttal, then we can move on to uh, commissioner questions. Okay. All right. Uh, this time I'll open the floor for my, to my fellow commissioners for questions of the applicant. Is there some hardship? Why? Why? Ex why is it so important to go outside the lot lines? Do you mean setback? John? Setbacks. Sorry. Um, this is a very very small lot, and actually that, that that's a, a good point. If you look at the map that we provided and in almost all the instances where there are these um, you know very close to the lot line situations it's small lots this is um, 0.12 acre lot it's 53 by 102 so there's just not space on the on the property to you know well I, I I'll there's space it may not be it may not be elegant space but well, there is space yeah, but it. I guess the point being is just a small lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as as we've noted from the uh, applicant from the um, neighborhood uh, next door or the neighbor next door, the height and size of those structures, even if I were to consider them relevant to this. <clears throat> because they are outside of the one and a half block radius, are much, much smaller in scale than what this is. Mm, I, I'm not sure that's the case. I mean, there, there are a lot of. Uh, well, I don't. 
Sir, please keep your uh, comments to yourself. Thank you. Uh, and also, <coughs> let's uh, ask questions of, of the applicant instead of comments. We can um, have, have time for comments and committee discussion. That's all I have. Okay. I'm, I'm sure we'll come back to it, but before there were other comments, you you were going through some of the staff concerns, and I, I think I can translate a few of those. One was about the roof to sill detail, and you know, I, I my suspicion is that has to do with potential <laughs> rot, you know, of you know, splash and I think typical industry standards would say eight inches minimum, you know, double that is better, everything you can do above it. I, I see from the render the renderings make it pretty clear what you're trying to do, which is have larger openings. But I think that was probably the basis for those concerns. Right. And I agree. And, and I think pushing sort of on some of those technical details and, and understanding yeah we might have to do a, a better job of flashing and you know think about that carefully but mm -hmm. understanding that that's kind of getting into the critical zone of that sure. tolerance there, there was also the comment about minimal trim around the windows and i know that that you know we're 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 getting into the territory where we're talking about you know differentiating from the original while being remaining compatible but there were a lot of precedent examples in the application um were there well related structures that had in the district that have similar minimal trim details to what's proposed on this edition that i'm i could have overlooked them uh what, what do you mean by well related? Uh, are there other examples of what's being proposed on the this accessory structure? It, it looks like there's very minimal casing around the yes the, uh, the windows, and I didn't know if you. I'm putting you on the spot for examples of that, but are there other in the district that there are examples of that condition, not not as a an addition per okay. se. So I'm not sure if that was your question. And yeah, sorry. It we we've been struggling some recently with 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 applications and uh, that have a host of examples of just little pieces that then you know the sum of the parts is you know trying to build the case for mm -hmm. um, you know a well related structure and so trying to understand how it relates within the within the, the district and okay and relates to uh, contributing structures or non-contributing I think that have been approved within the district would be helpful I mean I'm, I'm trying to understand is there is there one example or are there more than five I guess would be my question um, I would the the examples are the newer <coughs> structures. The okay. um, I'm not remembering the address, but on um, on boundary, that's the more contemporary design. And m my own house mm -hmm. on Euclid Street. Okay. Uh, would but th these are you know, and the thinking was that this is, you know, it's a contemporary structure, and mm -hmm. that it would relate appropriately to. In terms of form, proportion of of the glazing, and you know that the detail would be a um, appropriate for a house being built in 2023. Okay, that's all my questions. No. Thank you. Um, the the driveway on the north side of the addition is that intended to be a parking pad, yes. like a one vehicle spot. Yes, it's okay. it's uh, yes for one vehicle and then a walkway beside it. And then my other question is, um, I guess it's about the the renderings a little bit. Um, in, in the in the renderings, the the existing house and the addition have 
similar windows. They're they're both sort of lacking trim, yeah, well, uh, but but the existing that, house yeah, now that, does that, does have trim. That is just a. We so didn't just, we didn't render all the detail gotcha. of the existing house. So, so that's it, just it an has, artifact of yes, the, the render. It has okay. one over one when you know double hung windows and um, and casing. So you don't intend to change the trim details on no, the existing no. house. Okay. Sorry for that. Um, that's all right. That's all right. Um, the the thing that I keep going back to here is the rather unique lot configuration we're dealing with relative to the adjacent. Um, the adjacent lot where we're looking at a corner lot where the adjacent lot, the front of it is actually set back from the side of the corner lot. So it creates a pretty unique uh, relationship between the accessory structure, which is at the rear of the corner lot, but functionally is also at the front of the adjacent lot. And um, the scale of that accessory structure <coughs> in such a prominent location. This is something I'm having trouble getting the other side of to see congruity even based on the examples you provided, um, even distant examples, frankly. Um, and I'm, I don't know if there's a question in here. It's just I'm, I, I'm trying to get my head around how I can see, look at this and say that it's congruous with the built pattern of the rest of the district. Um, And the fire rating on the wall, if it's lacking windows, that does present an even less congruous situation. Um, I, I suppose the answer is one gets fire rated glass and puts it in those windows if one had to have the windows there. But um, openings aren't allowed. no is openings it, at all. It, is what, at least it, what the provided gotcha. feedback says. Well, the, I would say that the um, the height difference, if you look at this section here, mm -hmm. that it's it's so low relative to the um, 604 mm -hmm. that um, I don't I don't think you would miss the windows. But you know, mm -hmm. it, it's really it's set way down. You're looking over it. So I suppose in that way, too, this addition is somewhat uh, diminished in scale relative to the adjacent, adjacent house. Hmm. That's what I got. <laughs> um, I have a question. I, I see a lot of the precedent photos, um, maybe this is sort of piggybacking on what Rob said, but they sort of address the individual conditions of the addition. Um, are there any, or were you able to find, or are there any structures that are attached to the original house in such a way, through like a breezeway or? We, we we show some some examples of um, similar, yeah. I mean, not identical, but the um, so recent addition on um, Bloodworth, I believe, that is is similar. There's there's one on Elm, right at the corner of Elm and Boundary. That is, yes, similar. So, so yeah, there. Sort of a olive colored house with burgundy trim on Bloodworth. Is that the one you're talking about? I uh, no, I think it's the light gray. It's, it's um, got like a double, double arched connector. But actually, thinking of it, the one on um, Elm and boundary is kind of a similar condition in the in that it's a story and a half it's on a corner and the face that faces elm is actually very similar to this um, and its relationship to the drive is very similar as well 
Yeah, I have to agree that it's a very analogous thing. It has a breezeway as a connector, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. This is on the southeast corner of Boundary and Elm. And in fact, that, that was one of the examples that when we sort of assess this as being a, you know, viable, that, that, was, that it, I believe it's also a zero lot line, as a matter of fact, but um, that seemed like very, very comparable to what we were proposing. Additional questions from the committee for the applicant? Or are we still kind of mulling? John? Rob? Curtis? Nope. All right. Uh, we will close the evidentiary hearing and move to committee discussion. <coughs> Start. Go for it. Go for it. Um, as, as, as an experience in my own neighborhood, where <clears throat> a, and it, it was a project that went through COA here, um, the neighbor didn't understand how or what the issue was with the project that that. Um, that his neighbor was doing and never responded or came to came forward uh, to express his concerns uh, and it was a concern that I think that the committee on that project did not recognize very well and that is is that the owner for the proposed project that was going through wanted to move the setback ten, wanted to build the addition 10 feet back into the setback on an isolated belly button kind of view, um, it didn't look that bad. But when you consider, and what our mission is here as the committee is to be congruent to the neighborhood, not necessarily just to that specific lot. And um, if the committee had looked at that project the way we're looking at this one now, they, I really think they would have denied that um, project because of the impact it had on its neighbor. Uh, they didn't have the evidence, the, the evidence wasn't presented and it, the questions were never asked, unlike this one where we have a very proactive neighbor who has understood and has basically done our homework uh, to understand exactly what the issue is and how it impacts the congruency of the context. Um, I do not see a hardship such that a uh, that the addition can't be designed or at least a something that is uh, adequate be placed and stay within the lot lines on this project. I see no reason to go outside the lot lines. Setbacks, you mean? Setbacks, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I keep saying lot lines, but sorry. setbacks. I so, no so if it was, so they did state they have <coughs> a one foot setback. If they shifted it four feet, <laughs> would we feel like it, it was approvable? Well, again, we would start to. It would at least understand I could judge the addition based on its scale merits right now <coughs> the only thing that's so glaring me in the face right now is that it is outside of the setbacks I, and it's the only thing that I, I stop right there and I said we need to go back into the deferral mm -hmm. I mean, I think other comments can be added to that, but the reason for deferral is that it's outside the setbacks, and there's no reason for it to be. And there's no precedent that we can, that I have seen, based on what the evidence has been provided, that proves otherwise. What do you think about taking, taking the windows off of that side 
that doesn't help me at all either. But, but again, I stop at setbacks right now. Mm -hmm. I, I can I can understand that in future uh, <laughs> deliberations, that may come up as an issue that may be a deal stopper as well. But before we get past the setbacks, I don't know that we can get past anything else. Or at least I can. Chairman, if I might make a comment, I, th I think the committee members are aware of this, but just for clarification, <clears throat> the issue of setbacks has come up um, in determining the issue of congruity and, and, and in deciding your cases. The UDO contains a provision that relates to conflicts between the generally applicable setback requirements of Raleigh's zoning ordinance versus this process and the issuance of, of, of COAs. And the, the code does say that in the event of a conflict between the historic district standards uh, of any overlay district and the zoning ordinance requirements, the historic district standards shall control. <coughs> and and I, I sense that the committee members are aware of this, but again, just to clarify mm -hmm. the legal point, uh, that does not answer the question of whether this application meets the overall congruity standard and specifically focusing on the setback requirement, the fact that it doesn't meet the zoning requirement. Mm -hmm. As that was mentioned, of course, by the gentleman who spoke in opposition, that doesn't resolve the issue. It could conflict whether it should um, be inconsistent with the generally applicable standard. That's part of the process you all are involved right. with right now in, the, in determining the congruity uh, question, in answering that question. Mm -hmm. And in, and in response to that, I think that the neighbor's presentation was quite uh, <coughs> inclusive in terms of stating that none of the precedents presented are within the one and a half block area. So even from that standpoint, I don't know where there is a there is evidence to, to argue otherwise. And, and John, I would I would also. I mean, the, I think I'm I'm slowly getting my brain around the unique geometry of this, and perhaps what's poking at me. And this accessory structure is proud of the wall of the main structure relative to the street too. And all of these, all the precedents I can reach out to, of a similar relationship, it's not. It's actually they're set back further. Um, so there's, it's. You know, I, I can cherry pick an element here, an element here, and come with something that overall points at this as precedent, but in terms of the um, the overall congruity of it, I'm not seeing it. Um, I can just see elements that are congruous with other elements, but not with the whole district. Um, and, and much of it is, is the lot line relationship, but also the relationship of the outbuilding to the primary structure. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I would add that to my list of concerns. May I make a motion to defer? Uh, is there any any other commissioner who had any comments that I'd like to make before? Yeah. Um, I think I think uh, the the one of the staff concerns is that the proposed addition is is wider than the main house, and I think like that sort of speaks to what Curtis is getting at. Um, it's not wider the way that it's shown on this drawing. I guess it's taller mm -hmm. or longer in the other dimension. Uh, so you could see it kind of around the edges of the main house from Watauga on either side, I, I think. Um, so it, it sort of stands out back there. I, I could probably get over, I mean, I, I don't know if I could get over it as a neighbor, but I think just as far as congruity goes, I, I could probably get over it being sighted so close to the property line on that side 
just based on some of the examples they've given. I mean, uh, but yeah, I, I understand that. And you know, we we have another sort of intercommittee discussion ongoing about zones, if you will, especially within Oakwood, which is built in so many different ways, right? So perhaps that's even more pertinent here than it is in, in other districts. Um, certainly something to consider, but I think, you know, at least it feels very similar to the house in Oberlin Village that we had deferred once. That sort of like and I don't want to say Frankenstein because it sounds offensive, but there's a lot of pieces of other houses in the district that sort of comprise this thing. But, you know, the mass itself, as you look at it, something about it doesn't... It's hard to say that it's not congruous, but when you look at it, somehow it doesn't feel congruous. Mm -hmm. if, if that, that's sort of where I'm coming down on it. You know, there's there's nothing necessarily other than perhaps the lack of window trim or, you know, maybe some of the slatting of the, the siding. It, but there's not really anything that I could point to specifically and say this this doesn't look like anything else in Oakwood. But but somehow when you add all that up, it it feels out of out of place. And I don't really know how to put a finger on that and say that it should be deferred. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, do you, are, you, are you picking up, are you? I'm, I'm with you there too. It's, and, it, and I think it, it isn't about the elements, it is about the whole. Um, and I think, I think where it presents itself in the most problematic is the Leonatus Court elevation and how things relate along that street. Along Wataga, yeah, it's a little wider than the other house. I don't, if, if there was a house planted where Leonatus was, where the street is, it would probably not be a discussion today. But the way, because it is a corner lot and because the lot pattern there is, is what it is, the, the relationship to the adjacent structures makes it problematic and in that it is incongruous with a lot of the built pattern of the neighborhood. Um, so I, I, would, I would support deferral to get some kind of revision to, to solve these issues so we can get to a yes. Do, um, do we have some suggestions? I don't have any suggestions. Um, I, I am also not part of our decision, but something I want to bring up is the zero lot line condition, um, at least historically, has been exceedingly problematic um, if it was not pre-existing and not entered to, into um, in coordination with the adjacent neighbors. And, and that can't be part of our decision. It's more of a warning to the property owner. Um, but um, so if we can get to yes by finding a built pattern justification to it, then that is just a civil matter that's not our problem. Uh -huh. But um, I'm a little skeptical that we can get to yes through the geometry, geometric justification. Um, geometric justification of the relationship of the houses and the lot line in that, in this condition. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah because this, this lot is, is proud of the neighbor. It's, it sticks out, yeah. you know, it's kind of a modified cul-de-sac, right? Yeah. So, right. Um, so to Curtis, as you were talking, I was just kind of thinking through what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think, I think the zero lot issue is probably it's obvious a challenge, but I think there's also the the built form along mm -hmm. Leonidas that you know could this this essentially elongates you know the that north side of that the yeah. elevation we're looking at here, which you know seems fine in this elevation when you're thinking of them being on the same street, but the 
the one on the right is actually set considerably back, mm -hmm. you know, because in three dimensions, it's not it's as almost, I, yeah, because they're fronting different streets also. So, you know, one's literally behind the other because it's, you know, up this cul de sac. So, I, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. it, it would be, I think, both of the the setbacks or placement of the this structure from from adjacent property line or well, the side yard and then also the rear yard mm -hmm. seem seem to be difficult to to uh, Jordan's comment what would we suggest I mean I'll I'll make a proposal move it four feet so that there's a five yard rear setback um, that's that's a start well I've got a second one too and that is to follow Curtis's comments about it being in line with the existing structure mm -hmm. or, even, or even slightly smaller than mm -hmm. yeah. so that there is deferential understanding between the accessory structure because I, I will I will say this right now it looks like another house on the lot mm -hmm. on the lot it's not it's it doesn't it it has the massing of <coughs> a larger structure mm -hmm. and uh, an independent one at that, almost a third house, you know, a, th a house between the two houses. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that there is just f following the regulating lines would be my best criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about timing. Um, I'd imagine that this would be an application that the committee would want to review the materials uh, before the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Given that, so then we would don't want to defer to next month's meeting. Correct. Um, so we could either defer, and this is more, uh, probably more a question for staff, and we, we could defer to, to April's meeting, or could we potentially just defer indefinitely, and then the applicant can provide their information when they're ready. I think you should ask the applicant for their opinion. Um, but when, if whatever is decided, preferably a exact date, a date would certain. be ideal. So, question for the applicant: um, I mean, You could tell that the general consensus is that the committee is going to defer uh, the application uh, timing. Um, the The deadline to provide information for next month's meeting is tomorrow, uh, and the committee would prefer to have uh, additional information to review before the meeting. Uh, so we could defer to April's meeting or we could defer to a, a date certain. Uh, is there a preference that you all have? I would say April, right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I propose, I, I uh, make a motion that we defer this application until the April meeting based on the comments that we have provided the applicant as well as the evidential uh, evidence provided by the neighbors uh, and their representative, uh, Fred Belladin. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Maybe a question for Raz. Should, should we reference non-applicants in our motions? Can we do that? Should we do that? I'm not sure I understand the question. Yeah. Uh, Are you referring to referring to testimony provided by members of the public? Yeah. yeah you, no, it's it's testimony. Okay. okay. Oh, it's it, it's in the record. Yeah. Um, so it, it clearly is evidence, and you can consider it. And, and I mean, we're when there is evidence that's contra to the application evidence, of course, you're in a balancing process of deciding um, which is the more compelling evidence. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the question before the committee is the motion to defer the application uh, to April's meeting. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, aye. Op any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, so the application has been deferred to April's meeting. Um, probably not what you wanted, uh, but uh, we're, uh, I hope you got the sense that we're trying to, we're trying to get to a yes. And uh, we look forward to working with you to get to that yes. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
uh, just for the record, I'll note um, 317 East Jones Street uh, has been deferred. Uh, do we know exactly when or no? Tentatively, they requested April, but that may be later. Okay. All right. Any committee discussion? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Very efficient.